Hey everyone, welcome to Abarax's Precipice, the Expanse role-playing game. If you're on my channel, I probably advertise that I have a channel, but this is the only thing I do on the channel right now, so it's so much to advertise. If you're watching the show, congratulations, you know exactly what. Um, this is it. Uh, tonight, uh, we are we played the Expanse role-playing game, put out the Green Run and Publishing. Uh, we are on episode 18, actually. And uh, in fact, we have a very special guest tonight. One yeah. Jorge Martinez, aka TTRPG or TTRPG TTRP gifts. It, it uses the same G. Um, but uh, please, uh, Jorge, tell us uh, about yourself, what you do, where they can find you. It, it me, Robo Goblin, or you can find me at Twitter at TTRP gifts. And I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to be in space right now. And hopefully, you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll die. It's fine. It's fine. It's space. All right. Well, we, can make, we can make that happen. All right. So we'll uh, it'll make the it'll make the mission a lot easier for these two. I'll say that much. Um, they, uh, you know, they, 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 they they're overdue for a little trauma in the game. Uh, things have been going too well. We don't have enough. Uh, we don't have enough water. Yeah. No, don't. Only enough for two. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, tonight we have a special giveaway from our sponsor at Stonehaven Miniatures. Uh, they have donated yeah. uh, some really cool stuff. Tonight we have this cool, well, we have a pair of miniatures from them uh, right there. We get those and you'll get their Journeyman oh, uh, miniature brush set. Uh, this is actually a really nice little set. I, I'll be honest, like, nice. uh, I believe it was Maria was like, why don't you yeah. keep that? And I was like, because I don't <laughs> want it, because I, I want to give it away. It's really nice. But it, it's, uh, it comes with a bunch of brushes, even comes with mixing balls. Or something. So I always love good. I love a good. Wow. Uh, I need to get me one of those. Hey, yeah, I can, know. Same. Can, can yeah, guest? Well, I was, can I, guest I, enter the giveaway? Sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I went. I went way too long in my life without getting a set of balls. Um, in my life. So, <laughs> it's, we haven't started the game yet, guys. So it's that kind of show. Uh, <laughs> but um, tonight's key word to win this cool uh, set from uh, Stonehaven Ventures is type in the word ice. Ice, I, uh, I C E, ice, because we're gonna be doing a lot of ice tonight here on Ganymede. Um, last, uh, next up, uh, for March, and as we do every month, should we, uh, hit our cool big, uh, I know it's a large, it's a large, uh, thing to do, but should we hit our, uh, sub goal for the month? I will give out a copy, Expanse board game to the winner of tonight's giveaway. These are hard to find by WizKids Games. I, I haven't seen one on the shelves for uh, over a year. So, got one sealed up there for someone. And, uh, like, yeah, paint minis. Yeah, Commando. Yeah, it's a perfect set to start mini miniature painting. I wish I had a nice set like that when I was when I was young starting. It would have helped out a lot. Probably saved me a lot of money. Um, let alone win, <laughs> win one for free. Um, so, uh, and last but not least, oh, let me put the giveaway info in the app. Wait, button. Pardon. There it goes. Okay, cool. And then uh, last but not least, the best way to support us, um, aside from watching the show and listening to it on our podcast, whatever it is, is our Patreon. Uh, you can go there and get previews of who's going to be on, what we're doing, what we're working on, merchandise, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's an easy way to support us monthly. You know, we appreciate uh, all our patrons and stuff like that too. Uh, and I think I have, I think, oh, I have bonus episodes on there too, which we need to do more of. I'm not saying we're going to do yeah. more of, but we. Oh, very cool. But uh, and I see you got a few fans. You got a few fans in there, Jorge. You got a few of your fans came and followed you in here. Very cool, Matt. Nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, we're going we're gonna to do our opening credits, and we'll come back in about a minute, and we'll start playing Avrox Precipice uh, year two, episode 18. Right back.
we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Abrax Precipice. Okay. Yeah. As we all know, Ganymede ran into some issues of about a year or so ago with the mirrors falling, the UN and MCR war happening above it. Um, the reason why it starts, some people are still debating, but largely people believe that it was some sort of creature was spotted on the surface and uh, acts some marines. Um, unclear what exactly it was, though. But regardless, Ganymede did fall. Uh, the mirrors fell through, crashed a bunch of ag domes, a wire, and caused a massive refugee crisis across the whole soul system. Um, during the during the, the the conflict between the UN and the and the MCRN, um, the OPA has managed to consolidate into creating somewhat of a navy. We'll call it quote unquote navy. Um, and they have recently recruited. Uh, almost conscripted, we'll say, the crew of the Sinclair. Um, while the Sinclair is on a mission right now to transport some people around, set up some goods, do a lot of logistics stuff uh, to get the Navy moving, especially with the, uh, the rise of the recent Chris and Behemoth, um, Wyatt, you and a few crew members have been uh, tasked with uh, doing a, a mission on... Um, Ganymede. Uh, with you right now is Waxor Duchang and your favorite, McMichaels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're screwed. Real, real ones only. Real ones only. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael has what could go wrong? He's the only one that has a little bit of engineering experience. Um, currently, you're on a, um, a on a small station uh, or like a small station kind of ops. Uh, like uh, an older station uh, 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 that, that orbits Ganymede, uh, called called Ga, which stands for the uh, or, uh, sorry, Goss is which stands for the Ganymede Observation Station. It basically just kind of observes Ganymede and stuff like that to provide some support coordination stuff like that to your ships here and there. And it has shells that go up and down from the surface right now, and especially because the docks are handling full blown ships. Um, as a as a member of the OPA and also a former uh, Martian uh, Navy um, uh, person, we'll say. Uh, you've been kind of spearheaded to, to see about some sort of uh, representation mission for the OPA. Uh, like you're to meet with um, a group of UN and MCR and uh, UN and, and MCRN officers um, about some sort of like worry on Ganymede that the OPA has volunteered to, uh, we'll say, uh, deal with. Um, Jorge, Jesse, do you want, do you want Jesse? Do you want Jesse Rodriguez, Mr. Rodriguez? Yeah, Jesse's fine. Jesse, okay. Jesse you're, you're on the, 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 the Goth right now, the, uh, Ganymede observation station. Um, and it does have actually an observation deck. It's an older piece. A lot of most spaceships and most stations don't have windows because they're kind of a liability. Um, but this one does have an observation deck where you can actually, um, standing, looking out uh, over the um, uh, the moon of Ganymede and seeing the, um, watching the Aurora uh, kind of move around and so that too, the different kind of magnetic um, Phenomenon that happens through its magnetosphere and so on. They've been re, uh, they're a lot different than they were before the mirrors fell, uh, due to the debris that kind of keeps on coming through the, the, the atmosphere and the magnetosphere. Mm -hmm. So occasionally you kind of see some flare ups, some color here and there. So it, it's not how it used to be, although you uh, it might be a little more prettier. It's a little unexpected. You're not really sure what to expect from the patterns. And stuff. Got it. Got um, it. And you have mag boots on, you're standing there kind of like watching all such like that. And you're you're here for some sort of meeting, uh, some military guys from uh, the, the from Earth, Mars, and even this like what's been called the OPA Navy, Ultra Navy, um, have all kind of like they've asked you to come up here about some sort of issue they're having with Ganymede. They're hoping you, an expert on Ganymede systems, can help them. So you have a you have a meeting in about like uh, 15, 20 minutes or so like that too. But it's it's easy to get to. It's not a very big station. Um, Wyatt, McMichaels, and uh, Waxer, along with you, and actually uh, I should mention why you've been also requisitioned to um, OPA Navy, um, basically like privates, like they're they're just like, these guys are kind of scrubs. They're hoping that your former experience as a sergeant 
in the uh, Martian military can help get them into shape a little bit, but they're along with a mission for you. Um, I'll give you names for them in a moment. Um, but you guys are kind of walking to the station and you see this lone uh, person kind of staring out this observation field, looking at the Aurora. Like I said, it's like Aurora Borealis, but it's from space and you're looking down on it. Uh, it's pretty psychedelic. Uh, like Michael's kind of taps wax and so like, hey man, look at that, man. Yeah, that. Remember that place? That was a home. Yeah, man, we we haven't been down planet side since the mirror spill, huh? Yeah, I haven't even seen it. Look at it. It's probably a mess down there. Oh, I can't believe we got off. I guess we're going back down, huh? Yeah, we got it. We gotta we gotta see what we can do, man. We helped build that place. Yeah. I don't remember it being so orange. Though. He kind of points to parts of like like the the I don't remember seeing all those oranges and such. Um. Yeah, so you're standing there and you kind of hear these two belters uh, and you can tell, you're pretty sure these are like these OPA guys are dressed like all in black. They don't really have uniforms, but they have little like, like split circle logos on their, um, like on their shoulders and everything like that too. They're not, and they don't have guns. No one has guns. Uh, this is not the kind of station you want to have a gun on. Um, but uh, they're talking about the uh, auroras of the different colors and your knowledge of the planet and your knowledge of these auroras that you've admired for so many years you, you know why these oranges are appearing, why these oranges are, new oranges are appearing. It, stuff burning up through the magnosphere and the atmosphere. It's, it, it's the debris of the war coming through. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're kind of gawking at it. Uh, do you want to say anything to these, these guys that are kind of behind you? or? Yeah, so I kind of see them. Uh, they're kind of, uh, how far from me? Oh, they're, right they're like maybe like uh, five meters. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty good sized observation deck. All the okay. Things. And I'll just turn to them. Is this your first time here? One goes, the, the one looks, he looks back and forth. He's got kind of a clean cut face. Uh, uh, definitely smells like a smoker. And uh, he, uh, he goes, he goes, no nah, man, you know, I grew up on Ganymede, man. I've been out there all my life. Me and my friend here, we used to work there. We were down there when the mirrors fell. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, man, you from Ganymede? You you, you live down there? Uh, no, no, I was born in Mars, but... Uh, I can- I, can tell I, by I come accent, here man. often. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, did, did you work on Ganymede? I am working at, in Ganymede right now. Yes. Oh, shit, man. He kind of looks so wax. He kind of tasks wax. Like, hey, he, the real one, man. He didn't leave like we did. I'm out of Oh, oh yeah. I... I'm sorry. Gonna fix it? Uh, yeah, he's like, Gonna yeah. fix Ganymede? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Also... Uh, well, I, yeah, I work here most of the time, but um, this is kind of my first time actually seeing the the lights here. I really like the lights. Yeah, but uh, I know you were talking about the, that you saw some oranges, and uh, do you actually know how that happened? Oh man, is that a new thing? Yes, it's because of the debris of the, uh, of the war. Oh, the ships? Yeah, man. Oh yeah, they burn up, huh? That's right. Yep. So he looks to Y and goes, hey, hey, Exo, man, is that what happens on Mars? Do the stuff burn up through the atmosphere or is that only on Earth? Oh. Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, Sorry. He's asking, like, like, McMichaels is asking you, like, does the stuff burn up on the atmosphere on Mars or does it only do that on Earth? You ever see that uh, before? I don't remember seeing it much, but, you know, we're kind of not out in the open as often as maybe people on earth and how big these uh windows are here oh, man, that's true i mean how many people must be dying in those ships and all that debris it's sad yeah i'm out of really yes man i i wouldn't about about the people that have to starve because of people fighting up in space but that's how the ends work man you know and then like he kind of looks at wyatt real quick this like guy he's about, he looks like he's about to go on a rant like a belter's about to go on a rant against like <laughs> earthers and martians mm. and he looks over to the martian uh, guy in charge, and he's like, "Yeah, that's just how they are." <laughs> 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 kind of stops before he gets into a rant about how like uh, shit rolls downhill to Belters, basically. Um, All right. Goes on. I mean, yeah, it's uh, you know the. I just kind of start thinking about the lights a lot, and uh, it's kind of beautiful and peaceful to see them. It's, what I do between breaks and between meetings, which meetings that could have been in the equivalent of the Expanse email. 
Very nice. Um, he goes, yeah, man. He's like, well, he's like, he, like, like Michael's kind of looks and he's like, like this, hey, man, you here for that meeting? Or are you part of the Martian Coalition or what you doing, man? Yeah, I am here for the meeting. Are you? Are you two? Are you two for the meeting here? Yeah, man. All five of us here, man. Those two back there. I don't know their names yet, man. What, what's your name, Koyo? They kind of look back at him, and uh, one of them. They kind of look. They kind of shake their head. One's uh, one's like I'm I'm Bjorn. The other one's like uh, I'm Lissy. But, yeah, man. Yeah, Bjorn and Lissy, man. They with us. They 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 knew recruits for the OPA Navy. Oh, cool. Yeah, man. That's really cool. Um, do you? I don't know. I just feel weird asking this, but do you have any? Do you want to have any refreshments? They better have this thing catered, man. I can't imagine they're gonna bring an XO on here and ask him to talk to people and ask him for a mission and not bring refreshments, man. No, no, no. He's like, I say, you know, you can say what you want about the Innis, but they're kind of classy. Yeah, they are kind of classy. Although, um, if you want to follow me, I know they're probably setting up, but they're probably have the good stuff on the back room. I I know the way, if you want. <laughs> Just, he's all XO, man? What, what, he's like, uh, McMichael's looking the XO? Uh, sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Free food, free food. So Jesse, you make your way through the hallway, kind of leading these guys through, and they're not wearing armor. Like, they're wearing kind of, like, uh, kind of beefier, like, it's not even a uniform. It's more just, like, all black clothing with, like, like vacuum suits with, like, logos on. They don't match or anything like that, but they, they're they definitely in good shape, like, as far as suits go. Okay. Um, unlike the Martian guys you've seen on board who all wear the same thing, the UN guys all wear the same thing. Uh, there's not, they're kind of how, like, it looks like a uniform from a distance, but when you get closer, you're like, this is not a uniform. <laughs> so, Interesting. Okay. Uh, it's still pretty new, though. Like, they're, they're a startup Navy. Uh, you kind of lead them around. You kind of come back to the uh, the galley here with the kitchen of the air, of the station. There's a you're kind of uh, it's a small kind of space and everything like that too. And there's like some dispensers and stuff like that. Um, they got some paste stuff like that too. But it looks like they have some freeze dried kind of like cookies and stuff like that. Um, kind of kind of stuff you oh. see more towards Earth and Mars. Oh, I love these cookies, and I just grab a oh. couple of them. Do you want a cookie? Six one minutes, yeah. Well, I ain't a bad man. Hey, yeah. Hey, so, man, yeah, he's grabbing one. I'm going to grab some, yeah, too. Like, he's like, yeah, he's like, oh, Bjorn, man, listen, you can They got some cookies. They're like, cookies. Oh, okay, cool, man. This is cool. He's like, hey, man, you come back on, You come back to Sirius Station sometime, man. I'll make my special cookies. Really? Ah, <laughs> oh, man. I, oh, I yeah, 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 yeah. What kind of you don't want these, man. You, uh, you don't want these. It's the kind, it's the kind <laughs> my XO won't let me make on board. I can't make it on our ship. I got to make them back home. Really? Yeah, yeah man. I do like cookies, so... Oh, know. man, these ones will make you really like a lot of cookies. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I know. It just is like... Phew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, man. He's all right, cool, man. He's like, hey, he's like, all right, so we, we going to go in this meeting or what, man? We all to walk in together? I think so. And I just pocket up a couple of cookies and put it in my in my pocket. Yeah. You guys you guys saunter off, and you come into like a meeting room here on the station. Um, inside the room is kind of a meeting table around... Um, everyone's got their mag boots. You can hear the, the clicking of the mag boots constantly. They go click, 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 click as people move around. Um, you uh, uh, kind of see that there's like a there's like there's like three uh, uh, UN officers kind of sitting there across talking a little bit. You see three uh, Martian officers uh, sitting over there kind of talking. Everyone here is kind of lower rank. None of these guys are like big movers and shakers. Um, they maybe don't even command their own ships, probably, but they're they're on this job here to oversee this kind of, kind of at least be a presence um, here on this Ganymede station. As we walk in, do they like acknowledge us, or do they kind of look at us in disgust in a way? Uh, give me an give me an empathy test. Here we go. I forgot to turn on my. You guys can see how pretty I am today. Right. <laughs> well, I probably didn't see anything because I got a six. Yeah, I mean, they're, I don't know, man, you, you kind of can't take your eyes off the Martian guys. I mean, you, you worked for guys like these for 20 years. I mean, you know what they're about. Yeah. Um, they, uh, yeah, so, uh, Nick Michaels kind of looks at it, and you can see McMichael's, like, he gets kind of, he kind of has an attitude about the innards, but now he's in front of them formally, and he's kind of, like, just, like, keeping his head down and everything like that, too. Um, what about you, Waxer? How you taking it? I mean, I'm just uh, just uh, ticking it all in. I'm I'm more I'm really interested in what they can do for Ganymede. 
because I, I you know I'm like interested in seeing uh, what the plan is I want to I want to do something to help the planet so, and you can yeah. see, you can also see the table there's a few like it looks like uh, kind of civilians um, one of them is the guy you're talking to out in the hallway at the observation deck uh, hey, can you tell me what Jesse's dressed like uh, yeah, does he seem like a military officer? Sorry. Yeah, exactly, like, what uh, kind of officer is he? Not really. He's just wearing a, just a white shirt and a tie. He likes to wear ties. And it's a black tie and a just just normal normal office-looking clothes. Yeah, and this throws you both off, because, like, seeing a tie in, like, low gravity is really weird. But it's, it's like, they have, like, it's, like, it's like tapered down. You can oh, see yeah, it's, it's totally it's tapered. Yeah, you have to have a clip. One of the clip-in things, yeah. Let's go with a bow tie. Bow ties are great for... Uh, you, bow ties let's are, change it to a bow tie, Bow yes. ties are great for two things, zero-G and eating soup. All right. They look cool, too. <laughs> All right, and, and it's, it's, it's a green bow tie, then. It also lets everybody know you're really smart, because you know how to tie them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, it's like the Rubik's Cube of fashion. <laughs> uh, so, so you, um, yeah, you can see this bow tie, and everyone's kind of, oh, yeah, that guy's wearing a tie, that's cool. Um, and those, some of the other guys are kind of wearing lab coats. Some, are, like, it looks like a lot of them just kind of got on a shuttle, came up here, and just got off. They didn't wear vac suits or anything. Not too worried about it. Um, but everyone else can is either wearing like vac, uh, vacuum suits. Like your two other guys are wearing vacuum suits. You guys are down in like just some basic uh, uh, jumpsuits. Um, your two uh, basically privates uh, that you have command over. Uh, are outside. They're hanging out with a few guys. All right. And as you guys walk in, the uh, uh, Martians are like Martians. Kind of look at the the OPA Navy guys coming in and go. Yeah, they, you can definitely see them rolling their eyes, Waxer. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> he goes. All right, man. And, and Jesse, you recognize some of the other scientists? They're from. There are other people from from Ganymede. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, they're like, yeah, we're going to, uh, the meeting's kind of, one of them's kind of, hey, thank you for everybody for coming. Uh, one of them's like kind of like the, the director of Ganymede Station. He's someone who's like, he's not the director of it, but he's overseeing the recovery of Ganymede. Um, so he doesn't okay. own the station, but he's more of kind of a collaborator. And you recognize him. He's a, he's a, um, a, a soy genesis, like a, a genesis of soybeans and like botany. And he goes by the name uh, Proximity Meng. Proximity okay. Yeah, pra- or Prax. Everyone's on Prax. Prax, okay. Oh, um, did I notice that they gave him the stink eye to Waxer? Or? Well, they kind of gave it to all the OPA guys. They're all the belters and everything. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't It was It was hard to notice. Okay, and that's Prax. I didn't notice it, though. No, so Prax is one of the scientists from the planet. He's okay, from he's Ganymede. not. Yeah, he's not with the right. military. Yeah, he's completely independent. He has had some notoriety running with a guy named James Holden recently, but... Um, Hiring them up to help rescue his daughter, but that's about it. Um, right. But he's but he was someone that was like he, he left the station, lost his everyone thought his kid was dead. It's kind of he's got a kind of a rough story. But okay. He's back and he, he he's good at what he does. Um, and he kind of goes, oh um, yes, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. And he's kind of trying to like he's not raising his voice. He's trying to like put everyone to kind of pay attention. The UN people are kind of looking around, talking over him. MCR people are talking over him. Uh, McMichael's is like, man, he's that the guy from the video. So yeah, I, I recognize him. I, I oh, sent shit, money. You sent your money to. Yeah, you sent your money yeah. to him. I remember that because yeah, I had to buy your that's, dinner for you that's for a week. Oh, man, that's <laughs> yeah, that's Yeah, yeah. You, yes, found man. His, you know he found his kid, right? Uh, that's what I heard. I, I can't wait to talk to him. Hey, I uh, try to help him, like, kind of settle everybody down. Okay. You know. Give me a give me a give me a communications yeah. leadership test. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> From Waxor, I'm really curious if Waxor can lead. <laughs> yeah, me, me oh, too. Let me uh, throw a chair. I'll let you do intimidate. You want to throw a chair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna slam my hand down on the table. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Uh, so same. It's still uh, regardless of what I'm doing. It's still gonna be communications, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I got a twelve and oh. a five on the drama. All right. You get some of their attention, and they're kind of humming and humming and drumming, but they're kind of look over at you, and they're like, "Yeah, okay. All right." They go, oh. "Yeah." They kind of look back at practice. Prax. Oh. Thank you, uh, from the OPA Navy. Thank you. Yeah. And, and and as soon as he says that shit, as soon as he says OPA Navy, you can you can feel the MCR people's <laughs> eyes roll, and the UN people are like just kind of you see those, 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 like, hey. yeah. Um, 
I'm, I'm sorry, but so, well, please, let me, let me begin the presentation here on the station. And he starts giving a presentation. He's got all these slides and, and schematics of the station going through all this, like, and yes, you've met Prax before. You've worked with him a little bit here and there. This guy is like, gets way too in the weeds of technicality. Mm -hmm. And he starts going through about like the cascade of the thing, how like the organic systems are failing, why they failed, where the failure points are, what they need, all this kind of stuff. And the UN people and the MCR people, you can see their eyes are glassing over because they're like, it's too technical. Yes. Why you can't follow McMichaels. Uh, McMichaels doesn't understand. You guys can tell he doesn't understand any of it until they start talking about like uh, the growing lights and stuff that they need. Uh, he seems to understand that part pretty well. Uh, full spectrum lighting, he understands. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's kind of going, th going through it. And a few other people are kind of like, they're just not along. This is all old hat stuff to you guys, Jesse. You've heard this stuff a million times. You don't know if the guys across the table or not have heard. Okay. They understand it. Do you want to try to like, chime yeah, in a little bit? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn to, to, to Waxer and Wyatt okay. and Mike Michelson. Like, yeah. So, and, and like a whisper mm -hmm. kind of thing. So yeah, he, uh, he likes to do, to, to be extra technical. So, so there, it's going to take a, a little bit more time, but um, it's really trying. Yeah, because I have well, no idea what he's saying at all. This is okay. just... He kind, of, he kind of sees you guys talking. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, is there a question? And he's like, he's like asking that genuinely. He's not like interrupted. Yeah, he's like, oh, please. No, no, Mr. Mr. Prax, you're, you're good. You're good. Thank oh, you. Oh, no, no. I want to I wanna hear. Is, uh, you're, you're, uh, it, it's, um, uh, uh, it's Sergeant uh, Thompson, Chief Sergeant. Chief or something like that. I don't know the title. The... That's, not, that's not important. It's just we don't understand. We make like fully blink. Oh, well, well look, the, the station needs a lot of help uh, in these different factors. I mean, we, have these, we have these major systems that need uh, rebuilt, reclaimed, or constructed, or something like that effect. So what do you need us to do? That'd be the easiest thing. You tell us what to do, and we'll just do it. Yeah, the UN people and the MCR people are like, yeah, and he's like, oh, well, our first problem is our uh, ice processing plant, and that's why we brought in uh, Mr. Rodriguez here. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez is our best hydrologist on Ganymede, at least the, the best one that's still around. Um, and uh, we were hoping, uh, basically, the, the the plant, and he kind of brings up a schematic of this area, like, of the portion of the planet, of the station, it shows, like, you can see where Ganymede's covered in ice, like everyone kind of knows that. He's like, well, this is the place where we've been bringing in the ice to process and the water to use for the growing wastewater, uh, drinking water, everything we need. Um, unfortunately, that location is, and you hear like the Martian go, occupied. And he's like, uh, yeah, occupied. What do you mean by occupied? Uh, you, you see a... Um, well, when, when the mirrors fell, there were several uh, groups that were isolated on Ganymede, and some uh, began running rackets. Is that, is that the word? Rackets? Probably worked for whatever you're trying to get at, yeah. Yeah, some of them were uh, got stuck in certain parts of the plants, and then once access was regranted, they only rest they restricted access to, to that portion and used it to trade others or to leverage things um namely the primary fresh water source isolated and the group that's taken over isn't exactly being cooperative so you need us to go maybe convince them to change you know change their minds say that ideally yes um and the uh the martian guy go the the, the martian officer goes he's like Say the word, and we'll send a we'll send a squad of Marines down there in Goliath armor, and they'll take them right out. And then the <laughs> UN the UN officer goes, "Yeah, how well, last time you had Goliath power armor on the surface? How'd that go for you?" And he's like, "What?" And they, they start like yelling at each other pretty bad. All right, settle down. So yeah, Mister yeah. Bicker, we'll just we'll deal with this ourselves. Let them do whatever. They kind of the Martian guy looks over. He's laughing. He's like, "What are you guys gonna do?" He's like, "You guys are he's like, you "Guys got gear." We're gonna go talk to him. <laughs> talk to him. Oh, the UN guys are like, well, you know, he's like, this isn't a bad idea. So it's a Belter group that's taken over. We should let the Belters go in. 
Yeah. And, uh, how it handled it, and he. Built us, built us. Uh, we like to handle built a business. We take, we take yeah. our own. We go talk to them. You no need for your suits and uh, shooting and killing of more belters. Exactly. We want to try to beat the bloodshed. When Prax kind of, Prax kind of chimes in, yes. Um. So that's why we were hoping someone looking for the OK people. Uh, why uh, Waxer McMichaels and he said, I'm hoping you guys, your group, could help uh, bring uh, Rodriguez down there to one assess any damages and concerns that we have about the gear and the processing plan itself and then to potentially negotiate a way forward for the station because uh, simply put uh, all the hydroponics labs everything need a bigger water supply than we currently have it's going to be safe for this uh, for Jesse here uh, our cookie man is it going to be safe for him to bring him down there I like Prax, that. Takes a, Prax takes a second he goes uh <laughs> Cookie man? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I like cookies, Mr. Press. Oh, oh, please help yourself. And he kind of points to the, the tray. I was like, I was, uh, Jesse's going to be like, uh, oh, no. Oh, wait, actually, yeah. <laughs> you sure he's a hydrologist? <laughs> and I'm just munching on a cookie. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah. I mean, if uh, XO here, yeah, if we bring him down, I just... We gotta make sure we we bring him safe. I mean, have his, has he seen much battle or seen what's down on the planet or what f- potential OPA well, factions might nope. be like? Yeah, well, that's I mean, you, Jesse, you kind of know that, like, yeah, you know about this this group. Uh, but what you do know is the way you know you know that station pretty well in and out. So you have to uh-huh. get in, get yeah. out, and uh, any kind of other, we'll say, alternate routes in than the main tunnels. Uh, okay, okay. So I'll be like, uh, nope, don't know anything about battle, but <laughs> I do know my way through the whole place there. Okay. Is there a line of communication with these people, or they just cut themselves off? We've, we've, yeah, Prax like, well, we've been trying to speak with them, but the negotiations, they keep on demanding such, and when I present it to our UN and our friends, uh, not seeing it in the demands. Uh, in fact, you use declare them both declare them terrorists. This, mm. this faction, and they're like, "Yes, we have. We will not negotiate with them." And like, they kind of go in this whole thing about them. Being- okay, so this uh, your terrorists? Do they have a name for the fa- the OPA faction that we could deal with? And do you know how many of they are? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's he. He goes, "Yes, uh, well, we. Uh, the, they call themselves Frostfield. Uh, Wax, are you know that you and McMichael actually know this name?" Okay. Uh, it's actually a. It was actually kind of a guild slash like union on Ganymede for the yeah. ice processing plant, and you're guessing it's probably whoever got stuck down there. Ah, oh, we're like, yeah, there's no tear. Oh, we're just like, hey, look, th- them's a union group down there. We work in uh, Ganymede too. It's probably just a couple workers like us who got left down there, and then they're just doing what they can to well, survive. The current in practice was, uh, well, and they're currently led by this man. Pulls up a, a, a image of. Um, uh, it's, a, it's like this, this belter. Uh, you you may have seen them around uh, Wax, but you can't really tell. But uh, the name is uh, Fezzi Corinth. Okay. Uh, Fezzi. And Fezzi is a uh, belter uh, man, kind of lanky. Uh, he's got kind of a clean cut hair, kind of like uh, kind of buzz side shape, head shaved. He's got the tattoos. Um, Fezzi, Fezzi was the um, supervisor on duty when the mirrors fell and kind of decided to take over. Um, unfortunately, though, uh, Fezzi. Uh, the Frostfield are not alone and pulls over this next thing and you see this icon for um, like a kind of like a symbol uh, labeled Oak Fly and um, let's have uh, Wyatt you can make a current affairs check uh, that's an intelligence current affairs you might know who these are Oak Fly Oak Fly Oak Fly Oak Fly is a it's a it's a small mercenary group so they're they're mercenaries uh, small and elite, uh, only like maybe like a half, like maybe a dozen members total. And they have a ship so that too. But um, if they're on the station. These guys are actually are pretty good. Um, and it's, and uh, yeah, practice. It, it seems that um, Oak Fly has decided to run the protection element of part of the station. They, they've certainly been negotiating water with the rest of the station since the mirrors fell, but. Uh, Unfortunately, they're not willing to give up their position. They, uh, member, the members of Frostfield uh, Guild, 
they are demanding ownership of the ice processing. But that's nothing any of us here really think is a good idea. No, it's a horrible idea. Maybe can we send them a message and tell them that uh, members of the OPA Navy would like to sit down meeting with them? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've certainly talked, we've certainly sent some negotiators and the NCR and the UN have sent negotiators, but those have failed. Yeah, those guys are all shit. Let's get the real team in there and take care yeah, of Yeah, and them. you get a bad look from the MCR people across the room. <laughs> like, that's fucking I'm bad. Just... <laughs> and they, yeah, one of them, like, you can see one of them, like, mouths the word, like, uh, traitor. <laughs> like, when, he see, when he's looking at you, yeah, he calls you a traitor. <sighs> all right. He goes, uh, he goes, okay, like, like uh, yeah, if you want to send them a message, we can you can get a quick video and we'll send it through the, the system. We're trying to keep their communications limited right now, though. Uh, the the uh, our various Navy consultants, Navy consultants, he looks at them out and they're like, yeah, whatever, uh, have advised us to keep their communications limited to try to uh, make sure they don't coordinate outside. It's not a bad move. I agree with that. But I would um, still like to uh, set up some kind of meeting. Yeah. We could talk to them face to face. Sure. If if you want to record a message for them, uh, get that get to them. Uh, or, but but uh, whenever you're ready to go back down to Ganymede, uh, we we have a shuttle. There's a shuttle ready. You uh, we assume you have your uh, kit with you. you. Guys have brought. You guys did bring like a crate of weapons. But I see you guys have um, basically like uh, medium or light armor along with um, whatever rifles and pistols you have clear personal arm armaments. Um, hey hey Exo. They just want to drop us down there. <laughs> uh, I feel like uh, this mercenaries, they're not going to like it. And uh, we need to just uh, negotiate with the, the main faction. Yeah. Well, it, it's not they're, they're not going to drop you right on top of these guys. You have to go walk through the station. Yeah. Um, or you'd have to go walk along the surface and then try to get in through some sort of service entrance. Very dangerous. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But and also, I think maybe be a threat to them. You know, if we just come yeah, down. Yeah, you came into the back door. That's not going to look good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remind me, remind me, Michael, to show up at your house unannounced through your back door. <laughs> yeah. To see how it goes. <laughs> I definitely don't want to spook him. I'd like to, you know, want to do this the right way. So, uh, and then Praxos, yes. Uh, Intel says there's a total of five members of the Oak Flies down there, including uh, their leader, uh, Sakia uh, Ada. And Sakia it brings up a picture of this woman. Uh, she's pretty scarred up, uh, older, probably in her like late 60s. Uh, definitely a veteran. Um, I, I should also mention to Jorge real quick. Uh, the the uh, average lifespan for like innards like like is 120 years. And that's average. Uh, <laughs> not yeah. So they lived to be were built as long as lived about be about 65. So, um, okay. but yeah. So they have this like veteran and and like I mean, uh, she looks pretty spry for someone who's in her 60s. Like, uh, uh, you can see that, like the the there's some images of her like in combat in certain situations, like other stations and stuff, jobs they've done. She looks like she can handle herself quite nicely, not wearing power armor or anything like that, but she has. Inners, okay. inners get all the good, all the good drugs and vitamins. That's why you all live longer. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, please, uh, practice. Uh, more, so the current thing, the current situation. Seems from my understanding, what, I, what we discussed before our OPA members came in here is that uh, you're going the OPA Navy has insisted on dealing with their, their own, is that what mm -hmm. they kind of own? Um, trying to police the belt and the outer plants where the innards have to take over. Unfortunately, uh, the Martian plan seems to be the next step of sending our armored Marines in. Uh, and that would be potentially catastrophic damaged process. Yep. Yeah, we can. That's a terrible idea. We can't do that. Uh, yeah, and I'll I... just turn to uh, Waxer and Wyatt. So when you actually say talk to them, you mean actually talk to them? Yeah, Paul A. Yeah. Okay. Belta to Belta. I think uh, if we come down there and me, me and McMichaels, we, we work down in Ganymede. We're union workers. You know, I see. I kind of know Fezzi at least from Frostfield. I feel like if we get to talking to them, maybe we can come to some kind of understanding of why we need access to this area, and they might hopefully be willing to help. They're probably scared. They probably just think the uh, UNN 
and the Martians, they want to take everything and uh, put the Deltas out again. So maybe yeah. seeing, seeing us will help. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's impressive. Now, usually, the, uh, but anyway, um, I just don't want any trouble and any problems causing any damage to the, um, to the plant. It's, yeah. Trust me, yeah, same, same here. We, we uh, me and McMichaels, we're from Ganymede. Well, we were working down there. We save a lot of people, so we don't want nothing yeah, to happen. Uh, we uh, want uh, it up and running. He's like, yeah, McMichael says, McMichael says, yeah, man, I left a piece of myself down there, and he taps on his leg, and you can see it has, like, <laughs> he has an artificial leg. He no, literally okay. did, yeah. He literally did. <laughs> oh, yeah. literally, okay. Like, literally okay. left part, yeah, he lost his leg when the mirror, like, he got, like, cut off. But yeah, people need food, food and aqua down there, and we want to make sure, you know, people who are stuck there get food get those supplies and then other people elsewhere can get supplies so yeah we'll, okay. we'll, we'll keep this intact we're not yeah. gonna blow blow shit up <laughs> the, um, yeah so the 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 Martian delegation gets up and says uh dr ming uh you you know how to contact us we're gonna return to the isabel bilbao that's their ship uh and look to the un members and say uh okay nod and look at you guys and kind of try to nod and they <laughs> they, kind of, they kind of saunter off and then the earth guys kind of get up and say the same thing and they walk out another door I like how Wyatt is like F you but politely <laughs> I was kind of you don't want to openly start fucking with these guys and call them <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so oh you, yeah you guys have like you guys kind of have like the room to yourself and Rax is there and he goes um well listen let me give you um whenever, whatever message you have to send to them I'll give you guys the line directly to them um everything but yeah don't i don't think they like surprises hey waxer you want to send this message you want to be the yeah yeah the, yeah motive. maybe he'll uh fezzy will feel uh some comfort seeing in my face and and uh you know i talk to him every once in a while in the union and and he knows how i work down there so yeah let me let me give a talk on what do we want to say to him though anything that I would just tell them we want to, as representatives of the OPA Navy, mm -hmm. we would like to sit down with them and discuss a way to move forward without provoking the innards. Okay. Yeah, we want access. It's either, to us, the, it's either us or a Martian Marine boot, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It ain't going to okay. help anybody if they... Uh, you know, start and, some. Let me. I, I just want to real quick for Jorge because he still kind of need to expand. Let me explain Martian power armor to you real quick. <laughs> yeah. So it's built to board ships, okay. and anything that can penetrate it can also penetrate the ship, the hull of a ship. Meaning that if a Martian Marine comes onto a ship against you, you don't try to kill them because you'll kill everyone inside. Got it's, it. They're terrifying. Like they're, they're terrifying. Yeah. yeah. All right. It's like um, it's like having a squad of Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> oh like, shit. Yeah. Like oh, they don't. Shit. Or All like right. a Mega Man, yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. that's even better. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll just say to Waxer, um, yeah, and, and if you could please tell them to not hurt any systems of the processing plant because it's really important that we keep that in, you know, in check. I we don't want any problems with that. Yeah, piece. maybe maybe I'll even bring you on camera. We'll record you on the I, comm. Say no, that you no, you don't want that because I am not good at communicating anything to anybody. So okay, I don't know. All right, yeah, yeah, well, I'll take care of it, yeah. Uh, Walk me through, Mr. Prax. Oh, oh, yes, he's like, yes. Um, Already. And he, he lets you record, it's actually just a recorded message. Yeah, you. okay. So give me the recorded message. Three, I go, two, uh, one. Go ahead. This is Waxer, uh, representing the OPA Navy. Uh, we're here to speak to the Frost Field faction, uh, especially to Fezzi. Hey, go. Uh, Oye Fezzi, Beltaloda. Uh, I've been put in the position to uh, ask to see if we could uh, sit down with the Frostfield faction. Uh, myself, my uh, my crew, my XO Wyatt, McMichaels, who you might recognize. Kind of leads down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like elbow him out of the yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, you know, we're, we're here meeting with the uh, innards. The MCRN, uh, the UN, and we want to we want to make a s sit down talk and uh, see if we can get uh, access to the ice and the water. 
Uh, we have a specialist from the hydrologist here. Uh, he has got to look and wants to make inspect and make sure everything's okay. But uh, look, we want to sit down and, and, and negotiate and uh, see what we could do f to make you all feel safe, get what you need. No one's taking things from you. Uh, we want to get things running, water, aqua running through the system of Ganymede once again to supply to uh, everybody out in the belt uh, up here, help out the refugees. Uh, look, we, we're put in this position because uh, the Inners, of course, they want to bring force and they want to bring maybe uh, other things and we're trying to stop that uh, union to union. <laughs> worker to worker. <laughs> uh, I think we can work this out, Fezzi. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Comrade Waxor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah. All right. You get it Did off. You... I delete it. I want to record it again. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, I said it. <laughs> send this shit. Show. That's the whole show. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Two hours of nothing but like tapes. Yeah. The lighting wasn't team. right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, um, so I got a question about mm -hmm. recordings. Sure. So it's so it's not like broadcasting stuff or they, they so right now you guys could broadcast them directly and if oh, okay. you are within the, the the light delay is very minimal right now it's maybe like a second the most mm -hmm. where you are but um the idea is that like they've locked off their communications so that only they can only get communications when they allow it oh so the okay. idea is, is to open up the communication send them a message and then close it back off yeah yeah they got like a voicemail on and they yeah, did yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Calls. Yeah, yeah. the idea is like they're trying not to let them talk to the outside world or access stuff outside of it to try to keep them isolated got it um, got it okay it, it was kind of a first that was kind of a first step of escalation for them to say hey like we're we're getting serious you guys need to like let us in yeah and we're gonna cut you yeah. off and like they're not trying to like they're not starving them out they're not like trying to like suffocate them out they're just like okay. we're not gonna let you talk to other people got it, so, got it, got um, it, got it. okay so they're, um, okay, so the message goes through and uh, Prax kind of says there and he goes, uh, yeah, I went through. Um, we'll get that shortly. Oh, so thanks, thanks a lot. Hey, yeah, um, I, I, I learned a lot from uh, watching your message, Prax. I was going to you... say, I, I recognize the name Waxor. You you sent some money. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, back when you were looking for your girl. Well, um, thank, I you hope... so, I, I, thank you so much. It meant a lot to help me uh, find her. Yeah, the, the, the crew, the Rossinanti, was, they, they made it happen. Yeah, your message was very moving, uh, and uh, I learned from uh, you. You spoke from your heart, so uh, I hopefully, when we send this message to Fezzi, he'll he'll get the same thing. But I learned a lot watching from your video, so yeah, talk you for that. Okay, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, well, look, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to looking at uh, setting the next setup of, of the next bunch of stuff we need to work on here, but. Uh, we get that water back online. That's that's gonna help the station usually. So thank you. And he looks to uh, Sergeant Thompson. Trying to say your name right. Okay. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right. He kind of he kind of he kind of walks off awkwardly. Kind of like pops off. He's a weird little dude, ain't he? Oh yeah, big time. He's a weird guy. <laughs> He's a good dad, but he's a weird dude. Yeah. He, yeah. I mean, that was your waxer. That was you. The, you were the person that that sent the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he um, yeah, Prax said, uh, yeah, that he sent a a message out everywhere. And we all saw it, and uh, yeah, he was looking for his girl, raising money up, and uh, I was looking for my child, so my kids, and uh, looking for people. So yeah, I sent him all my pay. I was broke. That's amazing. That yeah, you had a you had a good person, and you're really good at communicating stuff. I mean, I saw um, your brought your recording and it's really good at that oh thank thank you yeah it's strange for me because i usually don't talk a lot i, I used to do a lot more punching but now I, i've been changing my ways and uh trying to get better yeah do do good things that's what we you, said you're you're doing good things hey thanks. by the way my name is uh jesse rodriguez and i extend my hand to well i, I uh, yeah yeah i grab out. it and i sort of dust uh, some cookie crumbs off his shoulder for him you know <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. thank you thank you yeah. uh, the, one, the one goes to the diamond it's like michael's just, just like michael's <laughs> Mike, just, michael's got it michael's yeah yeah Mike, we call we call him legs for short. Oh, that ain't funny, man. That ain't funny, man. That hurt. That's just hurtful. I know. I just kidding, McMichaels. We love you, and I throw it out. Now he he he, good guy, McMichaels. Smart smart engineer. Yeah, this one. Uh, but yeah, the XO. He's like, yeah, man. XO XO gonna see us through, man. He's like, all right, so XO. Uh, so 
You want to go down? You want to? Do you want to stay up here, man? Are we gonna go? We go tell Bjorn and Lizzie to suit it up and head down. Which one? Uh, tell him to get suited up. We'll uh, we'll head down and wait for a message back from whoever. Okay, man. I'll go get the maps ready. He walks off and he he goes out. As soon as he gets outside, he goes, "Hey, Lizzie, Bjorn, get ready to go get the maps going." And like, <laughs> oh, like, easy on it. We're like, go. yeah, yeah. 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 orders and everything. And he's like, "All right, they're like, okay." And they kind of they kind of like uh, they kind of straighten up and they they go off to go get stuff ready for. Them. Remind us oh. never to promote them. <laughs> 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 they go right to his head, that one. <laughs> I think eventually we're going to have to promote you, though, Waxer. You're doing a lot more than uh, hey. you guys are. Hey, whatever it is to help the crew, man, you you guys are all good. And whatever it is to help uh, Ganymede and refugees in the belt, I, I'm, I'm here for it. I remember that. Wow, you really are good people. Yeah, they, this uh, XO is good, man. This crew, they they found they actually saved me when we. I met them all on Ganymede when uh, everything was coming down, and um, they helped move so many people, families, people who were stuck there. We moved them all onto the ship, and they allowed me to come on and help. And I've been helping them ever since because they uh, we've been doing good things. Even if this in this whole OPA Navy thing, we're trying to do good things. I, I. I totally understand that. I, yeah, I, that's how we should do stuff. I mean, doing good for everybody, not just. Yeah, and, that, and that's hopefully what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, we're gonna get you, uh, we're gonna solve this uh, ice problem for for Prax and you, so. Yeah, we'll I handle. appreciate that, appreciate it. Well, while, while we have the time to, well, while we wait here for their reply, do you want to go out and see the, the lights here? I know a perfect spot here, so you can see it all. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's go lead the way, yeah. You guys go off yeah, and mm-hmm. watch some more of the lights, uh, the roars to do. Um, guys are out there for a few minutes, uh, kind of taking it in. You get a call from McMichaels, Wyatt. Go, hey, go, hey, boss bank, uh, we got we got the girl set up. Uh, we got to get you, Waxo, uh, kitted up, and then uh, we're ready to go down. Yeah, we'll be there in just a few moments. You guys ready? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully, we get a reply before we hit the <laughs> before we hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> are you Are you ready to go down there, Wax? Or it's been a while since you've been here. Yeah, I think I'm ready to see it. Yeah, I think I'm ready to to see what what Ganymede look like now. It's got to be better than the way we left it. Yeah, I hope so. Like, take a deep breath, you know, sort of bracing myself, but, but I think we can build Michaels it back, too. yeah. Yeah, keep an eye on McMichaels, because I don't know how he's going to take it coming back here. Yeah. We won't bring him to that spot where we, he got crushed. <laughs> Unless he pisses me off, then we're going to take him there. Yeah. Hey, maybe his leg's still there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? No, no, nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you'll be good for a good time. You'll be safe, Jesse. Yeah, you'll be safe. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. And I just go <laughs> to to the place where we saw the cookies, and I pocket like yeah. a lot of cookies. Hey, and go. just, yeah, okay. All right, you fill your pockets full. Um, you guys go over and get on the shuttle. You can see that Bjorn and Lizzie are suited up. They're wearing uh, light armor, um, with, and they have rifles uh, strapped on. The rest of you guys, uh, and they have pistol sidearms. Uh, Nick Michaels is there with a pistol. Got his baton ready and everything like that, too. Uh, you guys have like access to either light armor or medium armor, the two Axor and uh, what do you guys want to put on? Medium armor slows you down, doesn't slows it? Slows you down a little bit, yeah. I'm just gonna put light armor right, on. Yeah, light armor. All yeah, right. I'll, I'll go light too. Okay. So you guys have basically like your your suits on with like some like uh, plating on it. It's not like full blown like tech. Like, yeah, I don't want to go. Th- yeah, too okay. threatening. And then uh, you have your you have your uh, rifle with the shotgun attachment, Wyatt. Yes. And then what are you gonna have, uh, Axor? Uh, I just, I'll have my uh, rifle, just, yeah. Rifle? Do you have a baton? Yeah, I got a baton, right, too. Right. Well, I also got Remy's knife, too. Oh, yeah, and you have the trench knife. Okay. So, yeah, so you guys kind of suit up and everything, and you can see them put their gear on, uh, Jesse, and they're, they're not, like, none of their gear is, like, uniform. Kind of, like, hodgepodge together, um, unlike you've seen soldiers, but, you know. It's basically the OPA Navy, but to describe it, is, like, the, the really cool pirates... After the lower pirates, if they wanted to join teams and have a logo, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Per- 
That's a perfect and, analogy. And have a logo. And have a logo. <laughs> and they have a logo. Uh, oh, so, that's so true. So yeah, so uh, they all you guys all get the shuttle, and it's, it's bringing down them and some other people too um, from the station. It goes back and forth, and you guys come down into the no problem. The, the trip's pretty quick, pretty quick drop. Uh, you know, you feel the G as you come into the station. You uh, airlock in and come into one of the dock uh, shuttle docks, and it's not it it opens up and it's you can see where the lighting has been kind of like um jerry rigged and then uh where like the patches have gone on the station different systems have been kind of patchwork together to be operational um they're not permanent fixes but they'll work well enough for now um but the place is still not 100 percent oh there is the messes are cleaned up you don't see people like laying in like you know in the docks and everything last time here uh, people begging to get off it's not as crowded at the docks um, and the air is a little bit better. It, it, it's better than you remember. It's actually being kind of decent. But yeah, you're now in Ganymede Station. Uh, all in places massive. So, uh, How long has it been since you've been here? Uh, a year, uh, year and a half? Uh, no. Yeah. Maybe a, a year, at least a, a year since I've been down here. It's weird. I'm getting little memories of a life I had once before. But uh, yeah, it's good to be it's good to be back though. Maybe I can help fix it. Or would you? Does it look a lot better than the last? I mean, of course it's going yeah. better than last time, but it's being worked on. It's operational now. Um, there you don't see like the MCR uh, like soldiers like you did when you were here last time. All like all the soldiers are super occupied and like, checking everyone. But now it's more like they kind of you're guessing they probably abandoned it uh, when there wasn't anything for them here to like park. And, but now it seems like people are trying to like pour relief effort. You do see a lot of packages, like relief effort packages and stuff like that kind of sitting around. People are like going, there's some distribution here on the docks, but like it isn't like people are sleeping on the docks and on mass and huddled and huddled together. And what did we, did we ever learn what happened to the blue guy? Like, uh, the blue it, guy exploded. Exploded, okay. That, we, we did learn that though. Yeah, like, that was all broadcast. That's all been public knowledge that the, uh, the uh, whatever the big blue, whatever the the the, uh, the nine foot man without a spacesuit was on the stage yeah. to attack the old blew up. Yeah. Okay. I feel, like, I feel like I feel like the you're, yeah. you're in for a hell of a story, Jorge. If you watch the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like this great effort and energy from all all the factions and and forces uh, trying to put to help Ganymede. This is uh, bringing me, you know, lots of uh, lots of optimism. So. I'm happy about it, yeah. Seeing the effort. <laughs> I am trying to make it all better. I, that's why I'm here. That's why yeah. I didn't Our Martian go. friend, yeah, exactly. You you're coming down here to help put the station backs, Prax helping the OPA navies here. This is all we gotta do to convince uh, Frostfield. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you you get a uh, you get a message back. Uh you get a message forwarded from uh Prax Meng uh on your on your hand terminal. Quiet. I'll uh, I'll open it up. It's a uh, it's a little it's a little note and kind of like it has an attachment and it shows up this thing basically saying that like um, it's from Fezzi, uh, yeah, the head of Frostfield. I come up and seeing kind of looking at the camera. I'm going, man. Hey, hey, Waxer, uh, come here. And he's kind of him looking. He goes like, Yeah. What the hell is the OPA Navy? And uh, he's like, he's like. They give any they give anyone a title, Matt. He's like, all right, I uh, I'm intrigued just to meet with you, just to see what you are, if you're even real. I, I we haven't had a good laugh down here for a few months, so uh, yeah. If you want to approach the uh, the tunnels, uh, please make sure your your people are weaponless, uh, like, and uh, you can send in your little. Um, uh, your little inspector at the pipes um, with you, so, but uh, yeah, I don't want to see, I only want to see uh, no more than four of you told down here. Come on down, alright? Well, uh, we'll leave Bjorn and Lizzie. The, yeah, Lizzie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's leave them here and right. um, it'd be like a rendezvous of shit hits the fan. You can send for them. Yeah, I mean, so Jesse, you know the you know the kind of setup here, and the problem with the place is that one of the tunnels has collapsed completely. Like when the mirrors fell, like it just it just broke that tunnel completely. Another one of the major tunnels uh, has a lot of the conduits along it mm-hmm. for the water, 
Um, that's the one they're worried about having a firefight in. Um, okay. That's why they haven't assaulted it because or try to take it because if any of those pipes get hit, it's gonna flood and it's just gonna be a big old. There's gonna they're gonna throw more shit on top of a big old pile of shit that's already got too much shit on top of it. And okay. so they they don't want to mess that tunnel. But that's the tunnel that they're saying, come on down, and uh, we'll meet you. But you better not come with any weapons, stuff like that. But okay. you already get there, no problem. That's not an issue. All right. So I'll just uh, say to everybody in the group, like, uh, okay, so that that is the tunnel that we're supposed to go in. Please, uh, I can't. I mean, don't try to damage it at all. This is pretty much the goal of this mission. Please don't hurt it at, at, at all. And, I'm gonna uh, follow what they asked. I'm not gonna take any weapons. Um, yeah, we're yeah. not taking any weapons. Okay. Yeah, okay. McMichael's. McMichael's. He he wants to. Pull, he's like, let me see that schematic. He kind of pulls the schematic of the thing. He goes, "All right, man." So like, this is where we gotta go. And he kind of starts following the line down. And he's like, "Okay, right here, man. This this is this is the big junction, right? He posts up beyond. And he pulls up uh, Sally, uh, Lizzie, right here, and they just wait. They just wait. They have our gear. So if we gotta run, yeah. we can come back and grab our gear, right?" Yeah, you're, I'm you're going, right? I'm going with you guys in there? Yeah, we would like you to go with us, Michael. Ah, uh, engineer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Everybody gets one good idea, so I and, and I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's because he, yeah. he's not smoking down here on planet. <laughs> I know. If we just keep him off the crap, he might be the yeah. smartest person on the ship. <laughs> <Right. laughs> well, that, I, yeah, I think uh, that's a good plan. Yeah. And yeah. we just leave our weapons. I mean, I don't, I don't need weapons if it gets bad. I, you know, wax. I'll just start. I can really do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. yeah so, Jesse, you look at waxer. You start realizing waxer is like one of the biggest bulges you've ever seen. Not just in terms of height, but he's okay. also like massive. Like his muscles are like hyper developed. Oh, and he got t- tiny legs, though. Tiny legs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Huge upper body, tiny legs. Yeah. All right. So I'll just go. Oh, very tall, okay. Heavy. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't worry. I, I used to fight in uh, some pits, and uh, yeah, I'm good with close quarters. But um, I don't think it's we're not. It won't get this way as long as the structure holds, right? The structure gonna hold. Yes, it should hold, and it better hold. But uh, yeah, I can see that you're pretty huge. I, I trust you, and I'm you just see me, and I'm pretty slender, and like not many muscles at all, if any. Yeah. But, yeah, no, don't worry. Uh, this this ain't natural. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, we, we, yeah, no, we we take care of it good. Yeah, XO are you gonna lead us, and uh, if Michael's Nick Michael's don't talk too much, we might be we might make it. We might make it. <laughs> so you guys head down the junction, no problem. Get the tunnel. Um, when you get there, uh, you know, they, you guys are ready to come up and drop your gear. Do you guys want to try to sneak anything in? Or are you good? Yeah. Not even a knife. Or sneak in anything now. Michael's kind of like progressively puts his pistol down. I'm like, man, I don't know, but we'll see how it goes. Right? Listen, Michael's, we're trying to do this for the betterment of all belters. And if we do it the wrong way, everybody else is going to think we're just a bunch of idiots. One thing I know is I can run faster than this coil when he points to wax up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't raced in a while. Yeah, but we got to do it the right way. Otherwise, they're going to send the, uh, the dusters in with a gear and going to blow this thing up. They cause a bit of problem. Yeah, that's the problem. And they just want to come and blast everything with the guns. It's itching <laughs> to use them. All right, man. Yeah. So he goes, um, all right. You guys get down there, and uh, the tunnel's not very wide. It's only maybe two two abreast. It's, or you can get a, actually, it's a pretty good size. Like, you can get a cart in there. It's built for maintenance. You can see these large pipes along one side of the wall, and such. Um, it's a damp down here too. I might add, it, it definitely the ice eventually gets through. So there's a little bit of dampness, and probably needs to, the insulation probably needs to be maintained a little bit here, but. It's colder than other parts of the station. But you guys still have your armor on, your pads and everything. Yeah, I'm yeah. leaving my armor on. Yeah, yeah. armor on. Right. Yeah, right. it's about the best thing that we have to kind of have a cohesive look to make it. Um, you guys start marching down the hallway. Uh, it goes down for probably about like a quarter of a kilometer, and uh, as you come up, you get a uh, you hear a whistle up ahead. You, hear, you know, a whoop, like type like whistle, and uh, you guys someone said, "Hey." Arms up where we can see them. Why right, you put them up? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, put them up. He goes, they go turn around. They see the way. Kind of standard security procedure, and you can hear one of them kind of moving up to you. He goes, uh, right. he goes up to uh, Wyatt. I guess I'm the first one in. He goes up Wyatt. You feel someone patting you down. 
back in and everything like that. He goes, all right, clean. Goes to the next one. Uh, and you can see, and as he kind of gets past you, why you can see this guy is like, an, uh, and he kind of gets past you, pushes you back, and he'll start walking toward He'll walk toward, walk on back. Goes to the next one and pats you down. Uh, wax are, he's all right, he's clean. Yeah. Uh, McMahon goes, goes, all right, pats him down. Goes, uh, clean. And goes up to pat down uh, Jesse. He goes, all right, clean. And they all start coming in. They're, they're the guys behind him. He's all right, we're good. You can see, like, um, on the other side of him where he was, there's two guys stationed up, like, kind of on, like, behind uh, crates, if you will, mm-hmm. cover down the hallway. And they, they're, uh, one of them, there's another guy standing up behind him, like, waving you in. All right. I'm surprised they didn't say anything about the cookies. <laughs> because there were a lot of cookies. Okay, I mean, I heard the crunching, but... Uh... <laughs> There were cookies. Now it's just a bunch yeah. of crumbs. You crumbled them uh, up. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're like leaking crumbs. Uh, yeah. So you can kind of see these guys are kind of, they're not terribly well shaven. They're wearing uh, light armor, so they're wearing pads and everything like that, too. Um, they have assault rifles uh, and uh, pistol, sidearm pistols with them and everything. Um, and they kind of bring you back here. And uh, when you get on back, you can see a few uh, belters mostly. Kind of hanging out, kind of watching it, and they're they're kind of looking, looking here and everything. And one of them kind of comes forward, uh, and you recognize it as a one Fezzy. Fizz. Fezzy goes, yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all. Hey, thanks for coming to visit. I had to see this myself. And he kind of looks you guys over, like, and kind of sees he goes up and like, kind of looks at the OPA logo, the the new like the new kind of streamlined OPA logo, <laughs> like. I, I had to see it to believe it, man. So is there is there really OPA Navy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I love this. Like Michael's goes, he's like, man, I'm in it. I can't even believe it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Um, yeah. A lot has changed. <laughs> like, yeah, well, so, I, so man, he's like, all right. So to, I, I had to see that. So that let's get that out of the way. But like, why are they sending you down here, man? He's like, I'm waiting for the Martians or the the... The Mickeys are the, uh... They wanted to send the Martians, but if they would have sent them, they would have killed you. And so destroyed we, and destroyed yeah, all this, yeah. Yeah, yeah we I don't, don't want, want any of the... I don't think they're going to send the Martians. It's odd. They keep on saying that, but I don't think they're going to do it. We got too much to lose, man. I think, oh. you're, uh, I think you're mistaken there. I yeah, really they're... Think. Fez, they're, they're going to cut... They're going to cut their losses. They're going to come in here... Damage what they're gonna damage and salvage the rest, and uh, we don't need to do any of that. Yeah. What well, you telling me? They gotta do it. They gonna pull a Fred Johnson on us here? Do a little butcher of Anderson Station? The butcher? Nah, man, that don't go well, man. I know how they, they're so precarious out here. This not here. They can't do that. Look, uh, there's already been so much done to Ganymede, and uh, they're desperate. They're desperate, and they're gonna do desperate things. They sent us down here because uh, I, I told them, I, I said, hey, look, you know, this is a belt of the belta thing. Uh, let us talk to you. At least, hey, look, I, I'm from Ganymede. I, I worked on the docks. Oh, man, and, I recognize yeah. you, man. I said, yeah. Oh, I, I, heard, I knew a few trades with you. Man. And goes, yeah, man, me too. Man. I said, oh, sh- okay. Yeah, we helped when, when it, everything, the ag domes first came down. We were here helping people get off planet. And I know not everybody got off. And maybe some of yourselves, you got stuck here. And, uh. And then you're protecting this area, and now you got the innards and different people wanting it. So we're we're down here to, to see what we could, how we could make this go smoothly, so everybody would get Ganymede running and the, the aqua that's, flowing. That's, that's it, man. That's what you, you hit on the nail on the head, man. We we kept it running. They owe us. We kept it together for so them. So what's what you want from uh from them? We want Australia. Man. We want uh, we want. We want to get the ownership of the station, man. We want to own this thing, man. We want to have this process of the plant be Deltas. We want to be Oz. That's why I was curious to hear about this OPA Navy thing, man. Delta's got some guns. They got some ships. They can, they can maybe enforce this. Maybe, maybe make the OPA. Huh? The OPA wants us to be, or wants you to be taken serious. And if you're doing stuff like this, you're not going to be taken serious. You're going to be considered a terrorist. And then OPA Navy, there's a lot of us, and it's united now. They're gonna end up doing something to either appease or make make negotiation with the the inner planets. Oh, and- I got it. I I know. I get it. I get it. So what happened is the inners figured out a way. They got tired of killing Beltas, so now they're just gonna get Beltas to kill Beltas. Is that how it is? I don't want to uh, kill Belter. Do you hey, want that's- Belter Waxer? 
no, no, th this is what we're trying not to do, yeah? Um, but it's, it also ain't, uh, it's not uh, OPA Navy versus, it's, we have now all trying to do work together, right? Because uh, of everything that's happened, of the blue, the blue, I mean, the giant blue man who came and just started this mess, yeah? We're trying to figure that out. And uh, if we're all hanging on to our own supplies, we, we're just going to get divided and get smaller and smaller. Each individual group, yeah? So look, we're, we're asking you to let us in and let us get this flowing. And we'll make sure, hey, we talk to Prax, we talk to the people running Ganymede to get you what you need or to make it fair to you, yeah? <clears throat> It needs to be fair to you. It doesn't need oh, to be man. taken. Completely. Yeah, we're not we're not here to take it away. Yeah. What I want, the, okay, man, so what I want then, I know what we want, man. We want, we want Frostfield, a formally recognized union by the UN, okay. by the MCR, and by whatever the fuck the OPA Navy is. <laughs> want to be recognized by all three. I, I would I would definitely uh, <laughs> choose your your uh, be careful with the OPA Navy man. I, I mean we're just members in it, but uh, the Dems hey, running it. <laughs> hey, I ask you man, who who's running this thing? Who's running this OPA Navy man? Who who brass? We we tell them uh, Dawson Dawes and Johnson. Dawes and Johnson, yeah, yeah, them too, yeah. Do you, you want to tell them that, or maybe Michael will tell them that basically? No, I'll, yeah. I'll tell them that. I'll tell them yeah. straight up. <laughs> he laughs. He's like, well, let me get it straight, man. Got Governor Dawes and you got fucking Johnson running this thing. Oh my God, the butcher of Anderson Station. I would have thought, man. Oh man, this is too good. It's too good. All right. So what I want, man, is I want to be union recognized. I will say that, Fred. Fred union friendly. I'll give him that money. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. okay Rick. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask, uh, how unreasonable are those demands? They're basically asking that. They want to be the exclusive union, have the exclusive union contract to operate the station. That okay. is to operate it. You could come in and check it and do all the, the certification and verification. They're like, they kind of hear you talk a little bit, Jesse, about like, well, what do you want exactly? Well, we want to operate it. We want to do all the maintenance. As far as, as, far as you, uh, you science folk go down, man, you guys come on down, do your inspection, tell us what you need. But we want to be the running it. We want to be paid for it. And we want a bonus for all the shit we've done over the last year and a half. Yeah. You think sounds those, fair. Mirrors, you, those mirrors fell? That was easy to keep this thing running? I mean, this sounds fair to me. <laughs> they, make it, they make it sound like we're exploiting people, like we're trying to steal from them and trying to, you know, oh, you, you want to, you know, for water, you better give us a lot of food. Of course, because we got to get paid somehow. But maybe, that, maybe that's something that you got to do a gesture to make mm -hmm. sure that they know that that's not what you're trying to do because they're coming through the no offense but the they're looking through an inner sort of you know filter yeah and so what they see in you doing is that oh yeah these uh belters they're just here you know st you know making money exploiting this and that um i think if you make a gesture uh to say hey look this is uh we kept it running we, we did this to ke keep it running we we're good at this we could be trusted to run it I think then maybe your cause, your getting recognized as a union, will uh, have more weight. Yeah, so, and you, you would allow people like me to actually inspect the whole place, right? Yeah, yeah, man, you'd be, you know, the stations are, the whole stations are client, that'd be the client, and you would, the representative of the client coming in to check it out. That why they send you down here to see what kind of job we do last year? Yes, I do want to see okay. how no, that's everything bad, man. No, you guys want to know what you're buying. Is that what you want? You want to know what you're buying? Oh, I think I that's fair. I turned to the group and yes, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I like, yeah man. I never smoke something before I see it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we're like, we're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what he said. <laughs> yeah, so he kind of like, uh, they're like, okay. They're like, yeah, no, that's okay, man. He's like, all right, mom. Uh, he kind of takes, he kind of takes a quick whisper here to you why he sees you're in charge. He kind of goes, ah. Y'all are going to have to. Yo, I don't know what you're gonna do about uh yeah man, that's gonna be a rough one. I'm liking this setup right now. We talk to her? When she come out and she come around, man, but she probably watching the a camera right behind me right now. So she oh, don't you can see there's like cameras in here and everything, yeah. There's like a small local security system. Can she hear? Like 
Is there audio I through that? I hear this. I hear this much. I mean, it's so much. But you guys, it's hard to hear and hear at points. You could so much like like water moving and shit, and like you can hear mm-hmm. machinery. Um, you can hear like the ice being crunched up into the. So it's like, it's like imagine you're like, you know, like a your ice ma- your your crushed ice maker, <laughs> you know, <laughs> on scale. Listen, can you talk to her? See if she'll meet with me and Waxor and Jesse here. And we'll leave McMichaels out of this conversation. Sorry, McMichaels. <laughs> oh, come on. You can, uh, you know, kind of stroll around. But I'm joking, McMichaels. You can stay. I don't care. No, no, that's good. Man. I, I get it, man. I'll keep an eye out. I'll kind of see what we've got going on here. I'm kind of curious <laughs> how the whole thing worked. Too. I, only, I only came out here once for a delivery of some new filters, so I'm kind of curious. Oh, I can explain that. And I just started going on. Yeah, babbling on fun. Yeah, if you, if you, Jesse, if you and McMichaels want to kind of go around and inspect everything, see if it's in, you know, where it needs to be, maybe me and Waxor can talk to her and work something out. I, I do want to take a look at inside and and see how it all it's all working. But if I'm probably have to be there with the Takia. Takia? Takia. 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 I mean, you're more than welcome to. Yeah, that's fine. Right. All right. Well, like, you know, if I, and you and already like just being in here, Jesse, you can kind of feel it shouldn't be this damp in there. And you can't mm-hmm. tell if either like there's just like what amounts to like non vital leaks, little minor little leak crap, like just that needs to be, you know, needs to be resealed or whatever it is. Or if um, like things are starting to fail, you're really not sure if, if one way or the other on it. At this point. You can't really tell just by looking at it. You need to get deeper into the station and the main unit okay yeah you, okay but yeah um like michael's goes all right man, well i'm gonna he goes he, go, he looks to uh as he goes my face he goes back i see a diagnostic system like yeah you want to go take a look real quick i'll 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 uh i'll see about that and, um let me uh he goes with the camera and he kind of like waves at the camera and points down at you guys kind of like takes a second gets a his little terminal beeps and he goes yeah, man. Um, yeah, Sakia, uh, she wanted to talk to you. I don't know if it would go well, but I just be careful, man. Don't, don't piss her off. We won. Yeah. And I'll just, oh, would you like a cookie? And I'll just yeah, offer you. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> and I offer, a, offer them cookies, like, yeah. They kind of pass them around. He kind of takes, <laughs> he takes a few, they pass them around. Like, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, you can pass it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, it's really cold in here. You guys are noticing there too. Like it's, it's like a damp cold. This it's not freezing. Like the, the pipes aren't frozen over, but it's like cold. Um, the uh, and you can tell the ins- you're guessing that the outer insulation to the station here is failing. There hasn't it hasn't been maintained or not. There there's not a feeling to maintain or they don't have the gear. To- so um, they, yeah, they're gonna need us for that. You guys come into a, uh, another room. Uh, as he kind of takes you guys into another room, uh, Michael starts looking over the diagnostic data for the thing, kind of seeing some neat. He's like looking at it, shaking his head. He's like, man, he's like, he's like, yeah, this is, he's like, I don't, he kind of looks uh, to you why he goes, yeah, why these guys want to take this job, man. They got work here for years. That's 100%. I mean, I think it's, it's a not, fair. He's not, deal. yeah, no, it is, man. He's like, it's not catastrophic failures, but man, it's just like, like they they overdo by a few you know for the oil change by a few thousand miles you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Just uh, maybe make a a list of everything that you see is wrong. Yeah, man. I'll start an invoice. You kind of start to kind of start messing with that. Um, you guys come. You guys get led to by Fezzi to a uh, kind of a back room. Uh, and you can see there's a kind of cot set up where people were sleeping or kind of makeshift like little places where people have been sleeping down here. Mm-hmm. Um, you do come into what looks like kind of like an admin office. Um, and at the desk, which is like one of the few rooms you actually see where it's not like water, pools of water on the floor and everything, it's not as cold. Um, you can see like a, a woman with a shaved head. Um, she got she has some scarring along her, her side of her head uh, where hair will never grow again. And she's wearing like a uh, pretty heavy armor, like the kind of armor you would expect to see like uh, tactical, uh, heavier than any of you guys actually. Um, sitting there behind a desk and there's like uh, an, armed, there's an armed guard at the door. Uh, Kind of, it's pretty much like the guys you saw when you they patted you down and everything like that too. And you can see their symbol, which is oak fly, um, and it's like this like brown like fly symbol. And uh, the guy kind of looks at you guys and he goes, he goes, "Hi, oh, man." He's all, he goes to pat you guys down. He goes, uh, he's like, "Man, they clean, man. You guys let them in." He's like, oh, "I'm see the guy thing else on the way in." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you." So they kind of pat him down, pass down Fezzi. All right, come on in. 
and uh, you see this woman kind of stand up. She's probably like, like uh, she's she's um, she's in, she's like Earther. You're pretty sure, or Martian. You can't really tell, um, probably because she's been traveling so much in, in space all over the place for so long. But she's probably like like six three. Um, you're not sure if it's armor or her and her boots, or if she's just big. She kind of sees you and was like, uh, "Yeah, she's like so you the ones. So this is the ones they sent down, huh?" Uh, yeah, man, the OPA Navy. I had to see it to believe it, and she's like, "There." Hello. So, what are we, uh, why are we talking? Because it's either you talk to us or they send in the, the Martian Marines, and we really don't want that. Uh, We'd rather be taken seriously as a, as a new group and seen as equals and not as lessers. So if we can handle this together before those, you know, before they get involved, it'd be much better. Yeah, Fezzi's kind of like, yeah, man, we're trying to negotiate a union contract, and she kind of looks at him and goes, okay, how does that help us? How does well, that help me? What? I will ask, what, what are you looking for? What is it we that you... We want to be compensated for our time. Have you ever thought about maybe joining a new group, helping us out? Station security. Uh, she's like, she goes to Fezzi and she kind of goes, she kind of looks back and you guys are like, who's who, that was an OP Navy? Under whose authority? Anderson Dawes. Oh man, Dawes pays for a lot of stuff, man. I don't know if you can afford us though. And Fred Johnson. So Fred Johnson? What is your Anderson station? Jesus. Jesus is like, like shaking her head. Like, it kind of laughs. She's like, no. Like you believe that shit? And Fezzi's like, I don't know, man. This could happen. Fred Come Johnson on. and Anderson Dawes working crazier together. Sh- crazier shit has happened. You saw the blue okay. thing out there. Now you probably didn't. But you saw the blue thing on the videos. Yeah, I saw the videos of that thing, man. People Crazy were worried about it. Day. Blow up. That was all. Yeah, I was here, you know, on planet when that happened. And I seen that thing pick up Martians and, and just toss them like nothing and rip people in half. Hey, I was here when the Agdomes fell, man. You know, we're trying to we're trying to get Ganymede running again. I just sort of say that, you know, that kind of hits with me when she speaks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's like, yeah, and we were trying to survive too the way we knew how. We ran. We had a mission. We protected this place with these. People. No one looted it. No one went through and started stealing stuff. Whatever. And that's good, but uh, you know the time has come. You can't be doing it forever. The station is failing. You know we're looking Ooh, at it. The insulation. All right, so who who's claiming the station now, man? Is is are the Martians occupying it again? No, right? It's like yeah, it's like do, it's, do we know? It's do like a joint. Op- it's like a joint thing, okay. independent joint operation. Yeah, right now it's a joint thing between the Martians and the Earthers, and we would like it to also be the Belters, because the Belters own a better, have a better stake in this than anybody else. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Who, who's running the? Who's uh gonna run here in the station? For the contract, the are pink you, water still. Are you looking for a job? Because we're more than happy to talk to them. You've kept them out of here for however long now. Pink water so. contract's pretty good. Pink water still operating, and Jesse like um, pink water was like the security contractor for the whole station, and they kind of fell apart, and they kind of turned into more or less like a like a small mercenary group around the station. Mm-hmm. Um. And uh, as far as you know, there there's members still around, but as far as them being actually pink water, it's not really clear if they're still pink water or not. If they're like they're still associated with the company, kind of said, yeah, we don't we don't know what happened to our employees. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> oh. But these guys are looking. Basically, they're asking the security contract for the station. Hey, I I think that's not a bad idea. I'd be more than happy to talk to. Whoever it needs to be talked to, to get. I mean, is that is that Joker Prax? Yeah, he's a good guy. He seems like a really good guy. Yeah, he seems like a good guy, but he's kind of a boner. <laughs> uh, he's a little, he's a little pretty, uh, pretty, pretty weird, but he's I mean, a good if, father. If you mean he's erect, yeah, his posture is excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I hear this right. Frost wants the union job for this position, this area. And back pay. They want the back pay too. Back yeah. pay. That 
may be harder to get, but we'll definitely try because mm-hmm. you guys kind of caused a big problem here. And you want Oakfly wants to be the security on Ganymede. Yeah. Now, the problem you're seeing with Oakfly here is this group is like small. It's like 12 people total. Even like from what you what you remember of this crew, it's a small crew, like 12 people. There's no fucking way they can secure the station. Well, maybe they can uh, start. To rec- they could recruit and, and they could get like yeah. be a part of the overall security. Yeah, we team. can definitely talk to the higher ups in the OPA Navy to see if we can send people mm-hmm. to help them out. Or they could recruit more, you know, find more people you want to take on to do the security. I have no problem for Sakia to be a Sakia, right? Sakia, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with you maybe being the head of security, but you're going to need more than what you have here. Yeah. You know that. You know that. Any company, any good company is always willing to expand when the opportunity arises. I can offer my services here. I can keep it. I know my way around this place, and I would like to keep it safe. And I, you know, I could offer my services here. Yeah, and uh, Fezzi goes, yeah, he's only secure. They they want to inspect the place. They want to make sure everything's still functioning and you know, the status of it. And she's like, we just want to help. I don't want any trouble. And I, honestly, this is this processing plant is really important for a lot of people. And he I can, just want to keep it safe. Yeah, so Kia kind of says that's why we, why we went here we knew we knew a fallback position on the, on the station when we thought this is the part of the station that can't function without short of the reactors but there's That's no way they're taking the reactors off that was it was incredibly smart and very tactical i i some i mean you got my uh my respect for that yeah but we're gonna need to go talk to cracks in the joint yeah, the joint yeah we're gonna have to talk to him and it ain't, it's not gonna be easy but I'm willing to put my faith in you if you put your faith in us and open this back up. We need some way to show them that you're willing. You know, we need something to take back to them, if that makes sense. All right, well, why don't you guys, why don't you go do your diagnostics um, and like tap some things. So I'm going to have two of my guys on you at all times, though, watching you. you don't sabotage anything. You don't need time. Yeah, no, no, and, don't worry uh, about that. We'll take a look at the station, but I'll give you guys uh, two hours there to take our, our stipulations back up up the well here and see what, what they have to say. But, uh, the other thing, too, is we got nothing to lose here. Of course, the whole damn thing. Make sure they know that. No, please don't. No. <laughs> I'm not going to tell them that because that's not going to make negotiations any better. And you don't want to do that, uh, scorching this place. Uh, you know, think about all the other belters out there who still need aqua and, and folks and refugees everywhere. Yeah. A lot yeah. of good people depend on this plant alone. Yeah, and you could be the heroes. Yeah, get this place running again. Get it, open it up. Get the ice flowing. You go to be the heroes of uh, Ganymede. Yeah. Yeah, that ain't bad. That's not a bad idea. Hey, you never know, while you watch the OPA Navy grow and become more of a cohesive unit, we get a place for you there, too, in a higher position than security on a a rock floating in space. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, we're going to get us, we're going to get a seat at a table with this, yeah? Okay. Okay. Everybody eats. I'll, uh, I'll kind of think about that one a little bit here. Um... Okay, so they give you they give you access to the station uh, or to the parts. You have two guys on you at all times. You start walking through Jesse, kind of like checking out what you need. I think Michael's there to help you. Um, these other two guys with you, Wyatt and Waxhorse, seem pretty unhelpful. Like they don't know how stuff works. Um, they don't feel bad. I don't know what's going on in here. <laughs> um, I can pick something up. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a Johnson rod. <laughs> yeah. right, there's a reference there. Uh, <laughs> and everybody, everybody sees Jesse like talking out loud about the thing, like, "Oh, I'm, I, this is the thing," and I'm gonna. Like, and you have your hand terminal start scanning it and everything like too. Um, mm-hmm. You even have to bust out your little drone at points to like try to inspect some parts you can't get to. Everything. All right, BB, go on. So it goes up. And it's just, it, it kind of applies a powder, and you can see it feeding the, the data into your data pad, and it comes back. Um, How get, often do they open up channels where we can communicate with? 
outside. Uh, they only they don't have any windows. They only do it when they want to. Right now, mm. they gave they did give you a time limit of like basically like uh, eight hours. Um, so you have about another uh, from when you went in. So you have about another like uh, six hours in here. You uh, guys are confident you, enough to be left here without me if I went out, relayed the information, and came back. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I trust I, Waxer to be able to handle this. More yeah, than I, I think so far it's going good. Uh, you know, and if you it, that way, you could talk to McMichaels and have them stand down. You know, like everybody knows what's going on. But I, I think it's going well. I think Fez and uh, Sakia here—they're going to work with us. Yeah. Do I know if anything's wrong here? Uh, or? Give me a uh, give me an engineering test. So it will be your <laughs> intelligence add your engineering skill, <laughs> and you Ooh, get an extra plus roll. Uh, extra plus one on top of it all because you're uh, you're specializing. Oh shit! Okay, uh, <laughs> that's uh twelve plus five on the die plus uh, five plus two of the plus two plus one. So like twenty some odd. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you start. You actually. Um, and I'll let you blow. Uh, I'll let you use your stunts here because like you, you got doubles there. You got doubles on the dice. Yes. Okay. You got a bunch of stunt points, and basically, uh, you do speed demon. You actually go through this pretty quick. And McMichael, McMichael is helping you a little bit. He takes a shot at it as well, and uh, he he does okay on it. Uh, he's trying to keep up pace with you. You're a little faster than him, a little smart. You're a lot smarter than him actually. Uh, he's not bad at it, but he's he's at least kind of specially system. And he's helping you, and you guys start kind of diagnosing it over the first uh, get through about the first two hours of it. Uh, Wyatt, you head back out. And you come up to the end of the hallway where your two other uh, soldiers are there, and they're like, "Where the, sir? Where's the rest of them?" Just, just stay here. I got some business to take care of. You can, you can patch back in right now. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'll do that. I'll try to contact Prax. All right. Um, it comes up, contact Prax, and Prax goes, "Oh, did you get progress, uh, Sergeant Thompson?" I, I think we have a, we have the best situation to end this today, right now. But I don't know if the, the UNN or the MCRN is going to think this is a good idea or whatnot. But if you want this to end peacefully, we have the way. We have the solution. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't. Yeah, bloodshed. Absolutely. I, I'd really prefer not to go that route. I th- it's 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 really not a bad deal, in my opinion. Um, freeze or wait, no, no. Yeah, Frost. They want to be the union in charge of that position. They want paid for their jobs. They've been handling it. You can decide on if they should so, deserve back pay. Oh, okay. Um, the back pay is going to be a problem. That one, I don't know if I could do, but I do need I'm workers sorry. down there. So that I could, going forward, I, could, I can guarantee them like the union contract. The union contract. That's not an issue, but the back pay, that one, oh, we have to get it. UN and I the I think MCR. we could work. I think we can work that part out where that's not as big a deal, but maybe pay them a little better for a little while for the job they're doing because they have kept it. Everything seems to be in pretty good shape. Nothing seems to be destroyed or messed with. But the other thing is the Oak flies would like the contract for security on Ganymede. Oh, uh, right now security is being run through the joint operation of the car and the men. Um, along with uh, um, maybe we can set up a meeting with them to see if we can get Sakia a job as the head of security where she can help she's done a good job she's kept you all out of here so we know she can keep it safe and secure I wasn't trying to get in but um, okay <laughs> um, okay um, yeah that's a lot of money I'd have to see what I can do with the yeah, uh, the alliance is here. Um, I, I can definitely get Frostfield on the contract. That's not an issue, but, but the other ones are gonna be hard for me. I'll, I'll um, let me go talk to the to the other inner. Uh, Let's see about leveraging money, and I'll contact uh, OP my OPA contact about uh, getting more resources. They've already donated. They've already done so much. I'm not sure. I, I really don't know either, but yeah. maybe whenever whenever you find something out, we're gonna stay here. We're going to try to keep the peace as long as we can, which seems to be something that's not going to be too hard to do, honestly, if we can get all these things worked out. 
Um, just open up communication when you can. I'm going to be there, so I don't want to keep walking in and out just to see if I can get something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a shot here. And he kind of like says, uh, and he kind of like hangs up on you almost, like he's just ready to go. And he rips, I'm guessing he's probably on the other side. Off on the stage. And um, uh, back to Jesse's uh, checking out the place. Um, you, start, you start checking out, you start making your progress on it, on your inspection. Um, so far, it seems pretty good. A lot of it is just routine maintenance. Okay. Um, it's a stuff that would keep a, like, uh, still a few shifts for a few months of work, but none of it is like catastrophic. Um, good enough right now. Okay. Um, would it be able to supply the station right now in its current shape? No. Would it be able to in about a month of work? Yes. That makes sense. Okay. Like it needs to be brought up to speed. The efficiency yeah. of it's down quite a bit. Um, the processor is getting. Uh, you're guessing some of the teeth in the processor need to be replaced. I mean, all that kind of crap just needs to be done. Um, it hasn't had the place hasn't had any supplies for a year, so it's run down. Okay. And I just turned to Watson. and I expected a lot more damage, but it's actually, it's pretty clean. Yeah, so see, they've been doing a good job. I think uh, this will help uh, our negotiations with getting uh, Frostfield the contract and uh, show them that, hey, look, the people who took over this, they ain't taking hostage. They're actually trying to maintain it and keep it going. Yeah, Yeah. so yeah. good. Uh, let's let them know when we, we meet up with them. Yeah, I'll I'll let them know, but yeah, it's, I'm surprised it actually really good, really good. It, it's, it's just, just yeah. I, it could be better, yes, but I mean, that's, I mean, right now it's a couple good. people down here, yeah, a couple people trapped down here, you know, uh, Belters, uh, we know how to fix and uh, make things work. I think they did a good job, yeah. Yeah, could have been, could have been worse, yeah. Could have been um, really bad, but it's, it works for now. Jesse, make me have another. This is your. This is your second part of your inspection after you continue. Because that was just the first part. Uh, second mm -hmm. part of the inspection with with uh, McMichael's. Make another check. M one is last time. Uh, that's uh, 11, fourteen. No, tw twelve. No, ten plus thirteen plus eight. So twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. And what you got on the drama die? The off die. Three. Okay. Um, yeah, so you and McMichael's finished out your inspection, and it looks it, like all, all things considered, there, there are some specialty parts that need to be done here. Um, you can see there is one element of the processor, which mm -hmm. is the kind of initial, like, uh, like it decontaminates the ice on the, on the surface. I, the ice on the surface is usually pretty clean, but by mm -hmm. the time it goes through all the machinery, it gets a little dirty. Um, that part's actually on the brink of failure. Um, but you do come up with uh, you and you and McMichael's kind of combine notes and create like a basically like a, like a whole report for, uh, your data pads um, okay. collectively kind of working together. As you finish up though, uh, the guard with you, one of the uh, oak fly guys, goes, "Hey, what the hell is that thing, man?" Uh, that... it's a like point to your drone. Like, what the hell is that? Oh, that's BB. That's my drone. It uh, tells me about the stuff. Why does it? Like he's like, goes, goes like he goes to try to catch it, but grab it. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, he goes to try to grab it and uh, let's see if it, okay. He actually grabs it out of the air, uh, and he kind of takes it and he kind of looks at it. He, uh, like, please don't hurt it. Don't don't hurt it. It's kind of expensive and one of a kind. He's like, how do I know this thing's not just some like uh, demo, you know, suicide drone? I don't think it has the capability of that, but um, I can actually see what it looks like here. And I just point at my... Uh... I'm like, look at him. I'm like, look at him. Does he look like he's going to control a suicide drone, yeah? <laughs> I don't know, man. He's like... He's like, he's, heard... <laughs> he's like... And McMichael's is like, yeah, man, come on, man. Don't be... Don't be acting like you're in a trash. Come on, man. You better than this. All of this together, man. We out here. Like... Yeah, but that's what the Indians do is they come out here and they'll, they'll blast the thing and they say that oh, it's all messed up. Leave. Come and take it. Kind, I, of at, kind of specs it again. He's kind of looking at it. So I start kind of like trying to open it up a little bit here. Hey, like no, other, no, please don't hurt it. Don't. The other guard, the other guard, like raises his gun and goes, "Hey, hey, let him do it." And he kind of looks at it and he kind of like starts tapping on it a little bit. Expected it, and Michael's like, "Oh man, come on, dude. He do nothing to you." Yeah, he gonna sh he's gonna just show you uh, all the information we he was found, man. It's gonna be transparent. Look, hey, no secrets, yeah. 
Am I? Is Jesse technically like an innerd? Yeah, you're an innerd. Yeah. If you if okay, you okay. if you're raised, if you live on a if you were born on a planet, you're an innerd. I am inner. Okay. You're innerd. Yeah. In, in your loda. Yeah. <laughs> inner right. inner people. Yeah. Um. They're in. These guys are innerds too, but they're like more like freelancers, kind of like a monk. Um. Mm-hmm. They kind of uh, and one of them belts are for sure, but he kind of looks at it and he hands it back to you. And uh, as he does, he kind of like snaps one of the pro- one of the propellers on it. He goes, "Oh come on, man. just yeah. snap the propeller! I get like yeah, have man, to fix like, it. I don't have the tools to fix it." He's like, "Yeah, man, I can't." Are you, really... are you... That? I was, yeah, like you fi- you finish with your inspection, yeah, Jesse. Yeah, man. Maybe time for wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, Michael's gonna be, yeah, yeah, oh. we're done, man. I'm not gonna give you a cookie. And they kind of start Hello. leading. They start leading you out. Uh, why you come back and you're waiting for them, and they come back from the inspection and get the McMichael's is kind of giving the nod, like, yeah, okay, man, workable. What, uh, can I, can I try to fix it or? Uh, you don't like have your full toolkit with you, but uh, okay. you, once you get back out, you can. They, they unless you carry your your tool your toolkit in here. Got it. That's Be good. like, uh, I'll look for Fezzy. Okay, right, Fezzy's there. He's like, yeah, man. Listen, I think uh, it's going to be easy probably to get you guys the union job here. Back pay may be a little harder, but I tried to put in for where you could get paid a little better, hopefully, instead of the back pay. Because, you know, this kind of did cause a bit of a commotion. I'm a, he's, a, he's a, hey man, so I'm going to tell you a secret about Sakia, man. You may not know this, but I appreciate you, you talking to the, the about this. Um... Man, I, I can trust you, right? Helping us out. Absolutely. Okay, Navy thing, man. This is real, right? It's it's as real as it can get. And he's like, uh, yeah, man. She wants to get out. She wants to be done with this thing. She wants a cush job. She don't want to be go running and gunning anymore. She pulls out that badass attitude. You don't want to be running and gunning, man. She wants that cush job. You know that state that state security gig? She did that. Give that. She did that in a second. We're trying. I'm definitely got it. We're just waiting to hear back at this point to see what, uh, you know, the UNN and MCRN and the OPA Navy all kind of come together and see what they can come up with. So now it's just a waiting game. But we're not going anywhere until we hear. So you're stuck with us for a little while. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, man. He's like, okay. Work with that man. It's like that, that 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 bonus pay sounds pretty good. We can might be able. I might be able to swing to my people. Um. Okay. Yeah, he kind of takes a second. And he thinks about it, and he goes off, and like you can see him like talking to people like, "Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Hey, I will have a meeting about it later and kind of stuff." You guys, you guys are kind of now in a sense welcome to leave. <laughs> and you walk <laughs> out. Ah, uh, well, I think we should just stay here and uh, till we hear something back from the the rest of them. You show them you know, unless, it, unless it makes the tension worse, but uh, if they're cool yeah. with it, yeah. Maybe we yeah, can even stay like... Okay. You guys yeah. kind of hang out with some people, and they, they kind of talk to you a little bit, and they're like, yeah, it's been tough down here. You know, but like, yeah, it's like, Kia thinks it was a bad idea for us to leave. I, you, like, everyone give me kind of like a like some sort of communication skill you want to use to talk to the people around here to see if we're going to have a listen. I want to use like empathy or something. Yeah. Okay. You try to empathize with them as a worker. You can use yeah, investigation. Yeah. Just being like, you did. You. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll do that. Like, like you did a good job. Yeah. I'll do empathy. Uh, you ain't leading two. Sh- you ain't leading things here, man. That's true. So. You you do, uh, communication investigation or some sort of communication skill, and then um. Leadership. Jesse, what do you? Is there a communication skill you want to use to try to like? Uh no, I'm probably still fooling around with my my. Okay. I'm trying to fix the thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, you actually managed to cobble together with uh, the pieces you can kind of find around the st- on here, to like like a, like a makeshift bin for it to fly again, uh, using your maker skill. It's actually pretty easy. Okay. I'm like, okay, you're. Uh, what'd you get on your empathy test there, Boxer? Uh, a twelve and a four on the drama. Uh, the folks here they kind of listen to you a little bit and they're like, ah, it's just they they want out. They're tired of being down here. Uh, the food kind of running low. The food's crappy. Um, it's it's like the next meal is more of like well who's gonna need water next and that's good. Um, mm. A lot of them want to get back okay, to having yeah. real lives. Check on their families. Maybe, I like mean, that. maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe that's the thing. You know, get you guys out of this position, get it running again, and then uh, you get rested, and then you come back and take you have jobs again. 
but I, I get it. You've been stuck on the planet, uh, barely living, barely surviving, and uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna. It's a joint effort table now. It's not just the uh, Martians. It's not just Earthers. It's all, it's all three of us. We all got a seat. So we're gonna make sure that you, you guys, uh, OPA Navy, will make sure you're taken care of, because you built us. Yeah, it'd be kind of like That's hearing that. Here and they're for. they're interested in that kind of um, that kind of approach. Uh, like, what would you roll for, uh, Wyatt? I just did straight communication because I don't have any other okay. skills. I got a fifteen with a six on the drama. Pretty damn good. Um, I forgot to churn today too. I forgot to churn a little bit. We're not churn- you guys aren't churning too hard, so that's good. Um, yeah. so uh, <laughs> you um, yeah, you, you kind of check around, talk to people a little bit. But what's coming out is that is that uh, Oak Fly is it seems is like they're the ones with like the big position. They kind of view it that Sakia views this as a as a tactical situation. They have a, a they have a top of the mountain. They're not going to give it up. Mm-hmm. And unless something much sweeter comes by, but you got this information about her like wanting to like, be done. Uh, and this might be the cush job that does it. So getting this would be, cool, but it's going to be kind of a hard sell. Of a private security company here. We'll kind of go around and see if what people think uh, if she'd be. If that didn't come through, she'd be willing to. If they thought that she'd be willing to move to a more cushy job in the OPA, because her tactical skills are top notch, she could be used in some form that way. Yeah, uh, the best guess you have though is like, and you know how much an OP, how much OPA people make, and they ain't making the kind of money that like a private mercenary force, like the, let alone a private security firm for a station like Ganymede. But it's not competitive. Is Price wise, mm-hmm. and she doesn't really give a shit about like the OPA's freaking belter pow- empowerment thing. She doesn't give a fuck about it. She about just ready to kind of retire. In she wants money. Yeah, she wants to retire. She's done. She's done with all this like all this like bickering. No, she's not Fred Johnson. But she just, yeah, she doesn't have that I- idealism. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's gonna be the issue. Is appealing to her. That it's gonna be ours. Um, Jesse, you kind of hang on. You hang around and you start pestering you for cookies, which you ran out of. You ran out of about an hour ago. No, oh, oh, shit. Yeah. There's only so many cookies. Uh, your, your pockets are only so many, <laughs> sir. And uh, you, uh, Save it. so uh, but yeah, it, it's kind of interesting hanging out here, and it's, it, it kind of throws you back to be you know, on Ganymede in the early days, mm-hmm. it being kind of run down, damp until relief efforts started really kind of helping and pouring in, which took months. Um, but you get a little bit of flashbacks to like that or those early times and like the uncertainty of it all. Um, but you also know that if you just go down the hallway, you'll be back in a much more safe area. So, uh, something you didn't have when the mirror fell initially. Okay, so what does that mean to... I mean, okay, okay. I see. Like seeing people sleep in like tunnels and stuff like that too where back on this main station people are now sleeping in real rooms and real like apartments mm-hmm. um again versus like where they were all crowded and bunched up on the docks to like try to get off the stations got it where this is like this kind of throws you back to that um that kind of like huddled uh damp very like uh very impoverished also dangerous okay um you guys hang out and you get word back from Prax. Um, Prax kind of comes back and he says, um, look, uh, yeah, the Union, uh, basically his message says, uh, comes through the first and God telling you that bringing Frost Guild on is not an issue. Um, it's more in the bonus, they can kind of do the initial signing bonus. That's actually not an issue either. The back pay, they don't have the kind of money you guys are demanding. But a fair Union wage would be, they can't do the back pay. They just don't have that kind of resource. I think that's fair. I mean, I'll, I'll relay that to uh, Fez. As far as the private, the security thing goes, he's like, the the Martians and the UN don't want to give the power up. OPA seems, I'm guessing, according to you, seems okay with it, but they don't want to give their station security up. They, they're, they're, they're nervous about this. they be their army out here. Mm-hmm. What if we make a commitment as the OPA Navy to make sure 
that Sakia follows orders from everybody. It won't be just her decision, her decision alone. It's kind of a joint thing, but she's running the she's running the show, but she doesn't make the decisions completely on her own. Interesting. Interesting. Delegate. Okay. The, the primary point delegation. Hmm. Might be able to sell that to them. Okay. And he kind of, he, he clicks over <laughs> to that he's done talking. <laughs> kind of like that, yeah. yeah. really needs to know, understand phone. Yeah, 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 he's not, he, he's not, he's <laughs> not the most uh, social person. Uh, ask him about soybeans, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you all about soybeans. Um, I'll hang up on him. Exactly. That'll <laughs> learn him. What about soybeans? No way, nerd. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, okay. And I'll uh, just tell. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, yeah, please. Okay, I'll just tell the um, the guys here that I'm surprised that Sakia wants to go. Like she, he, she has like everything set up here to, for success, and she's doing pretty good at it. And she could do even more good. Yeah, but you can't be uh, doing that for for your whole life. It must, you know, it's gonna get tiring and uh, always, always living on the edge. Yeah. yeah. No, I do believe that. I do believe that everybody needs to get paid rightfully for their work. Mm-hmm. But and uh, you know, go... the Belters. Yeah. Yeah. Go go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, for the Belters too, they they're tired of being policed by just uh, earthers and martians we gotta get a belta um belta security team or some type of belta representation in the, in it or this ain't gonna work at all yeah because the belters will just see it as the old way and then i'm sure opa navy are not gonna like that either so yeah um, we can't oh, sorry uh, we can't risk more harm to ganymede i mean sh- surely this this place wasn't the same as you when you left it, uh, but we tried. We we tried. We slowly rebuilt it up. Rebuilt it. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be the thing that's gonna feed all three of the all three of our our uh, you know joint uh, independent factions, and that's that's what Ganymede is. It's gonna represent represent the thing that's going to be the lifeline for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what we're gonna try to do. Um, okay, so, um, uh, yeah, Fezzy, oh, uh, yeah, Fez. is like, oh, so, they're gonna, they're gonna let us off on this thing? Yeah, but you're not gonna get the back pay, unfortunately. They'll give you a sign-on bonus and competitive wages, but you they just can't afford, there's no money in it to give you back pay. Uh, give me a pers- vacation. <laughs> give me a persuasion, <laughs> give me a persuasion, that's on that. Is that in your communication? Yeah. Burn that fortune, dude. Burn it. <laughs> Six, Make it work, police. It's on the drama. <laughs> All right, double so, oh, double okay. So, yeah, you tell them that, and they kind of, uh, you burn you, you burn some stump point there and kind of get them on. They're like, he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I guess we all had big sacrifices, right? Oh, very <sighs> good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know how much longer we keep the thing running. Uh, but what about Sakia, man? You gonna get her to gonna give it up? I don't know yet. We're just waiting to hear back from uh, Prax again to see if what we can offer her. Uh, you wait. You wait about like two hours, something like that, and Prax was back and goes, um, "Yeah, the the Martians and the the Earthers, they're they want to keep this thing joint uh, for the time being. They're barely even recognizing the AD." Um, putting someone else on here would be much um, we're going to find another way or uh, they the others just possibly uh, with you in there getting rid of them for everyone I'd rather avoid doing that I told yeah, I told we, him, we, I told them that's what I'd prefer too, but uh, you know how they are. Yeah, let me uh, let me do some more talking to her and see if we can come to some kind of an agreement. I'll try to see if I can get a 
another meeting with her. Okay. Uh, Fezzy comes to you, Jesse, the the head of you. He goes, hey, oh, man, it looks like we're going to be working together. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, well, and he's like, no, I remember seeing you on the station back then, uh, coming through for some inspections, but, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Oh, right, the, right, right. Yeah. yeah, it's been a, it's, it's hard right. living down here, man. Um, hey, I man, is this, that. this, hey, it's like I asked myself. Mm-hmm. He's all one to one, man. Ganymede to Ganymede. Being me, is this real? I think it is, yes. Yeah, that's weird. These eyes can't get over it. I can't, I can't process it. Why? Why is that hard to believe? I don't know. I can't believe that the Indians are gonna let there be another navy. <laughs> you know. But isn't that a good thing? It's just weird. They they don't play that game. They don't let people kind of. They don't let people rise up. They they kept a boot on the back of the Belters' necks forever. Now they let them get a navy. But I don't know. I guess they got distracted by each other. Right, but I mean, I I think it's a good thing because well, anyway. I think it's good too. Don't get me wrong. This is weird. I know. But we're, it's sometimes good, you know? Fair. All right, so you think, you think your guy here, you think your guy here, this guy Wyatt, gonna be able to talk Sakia into it? I, I've only known Wyatt for okay. a day. <laughs> so I can't really say much about that. I, hopefully, hopefully it's for the best, but I, I sure, he, 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 he can do it. Okay, I'm trusting you on that. Um, yeah. Why well, you you come up to the the admin office and you can see the guards there and the like kids inside and up the door and yeah, yeah. I let him in. But she goes, yeah. What what the, the big brass say? Well, definitely not what you want to hear. I can tell you that. All right. Because you, do you have any other? Anything that I can help you get to get this over with. I mean, we can give you some kind of position in the OPA Navy that maybe not as lucrative, but your tactical skills are by far some of the best that I've I've seen being out here. We could really definitely use somebody like you to make this more legitimate. Got plenty of pirates on your. I'm sure they got plenty of pirates on. I think hell, they probably got probably got Ashford running something for them. I'm sure. We don't need more pirates. We need people with a brain that know how to use it. Any, any, any pirate still living knows how to use the brain. I'm just more of a boots on the ground type of gal. Uh, but eventually, we all want to just stop being boots on the ground. Maybe more of a, not necessarily an office job, but something more in mind where you can just relax and not look over your shoulder all the time. She goes and says, uh, she goes, all right. I got a number. It wasn't the cost for me and my men to give this position up. See if your uh, your folks will be willing to pay this. And she kind of like like flashes you over a number. It's a large sum of money, a very large sum of money. Um, and it is well beyond what the OPA kind of their kind of coin purse they've given you. In. You have a little bit of money from them, like to use around. This is like you're gonna have to go to like Johnson or Dawes or someone to pay off this. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like it looks like the kind of money to basically pay off for people and her for her to retire off. Of. Let me um, let me make a phone call and uh, maybe we could see something. I can't guarantee you that much, but is there any wiggle room there? Or is that is that where right, it's that's, at? That's what I need right there. And you got you'll, and they'd never hear from me again. Or they can try to come take it from my cold dead hand. Which is their <laughs> what they're off. Yeah. It's it's pretty much where they're down to. And what I don't the, want the uh she says like why the way you carry yourself, I can tell you were in a real army you're in a real military once. You know what the, you know what the, the expected casualties for a station assault is? The expected casualty number is? Sixty percent. If then in five marines, even in power armor, only two are gonna walk out of here. Maybe none of you, though. I'd rather see you walk out this door with no, no ask repercussions. Us, ask yourself this: How's it going to look when more when more hitters come down here and stomp on those? Isn't that your whole point? Stopping this. That's why. Go give, I'd me, like, go give me that number, and then, then I'm, we're out of here. 
Let me see what I can do. Can I make calls out of here yet? Or are they kill? Uh, no, they, they still haven't killed. Like they have this like huge blackout on the small spot. You're gonna have, like walk out of here to actually make calls and everything. Otherwise, you have to wait for the wind. I want to go as far as I can, or need to go to send okay. a message. I'm gonna try to send it to both Dawes and and uh, Red Johnson. Send it to the upper rank. Dawes is your primary contact, so I'm um, just gonna send it to Dawes then. Okay. I'll just leave Fred Johnson out of this right now. You send it up the you send it up the chain. Uh, it's gonna take a few hours to get a response. Um, you kind of hang out with it, and uh, you get back one of Dawes' assistants, basically saying like. Uh, They're paying these guys off is a possibility. But they'd rather just get rid of them. Uh, not to mention showing paying them off feels like an un, if we if we pay them off, that's an unsustainable strategy. Down to if we're to freaking kill them, it shows the UN and the MCR that like we mean business. Dawes is for. Basically, you're subduing or killing them. Okay, I'm going to. Uh... So, long story short, he doesn't have the money to pay them off. Is what it comes down to. Yeah. How but many? Maybe if you could, you might be able to persuade some of her uh, guys to join up. They're younger. She's not going to join up though. She's done. She's out. How many people are in the Frost group? Uh, Fro- Frost builds like thirty people. There's quite a few in it. And then there's just. Five. It's, it's five of them total, yeah, including Sakia, yeah. I would like to talk, have a uh, try to pull Fezzi aside and talk uh, to him. Yeah, he's like, yeah, well, what's up? Listen, I can get you everything that you need, but the OPA isn't going to back down and help get Sakia what she wants. I don't want to do this the hard way. I don't want to kill anybody. I don't think that's the right way at all. But if we can work together. Maybe we could. Uh, there's more of you than there are of them. Well, man, we they, they, they tough, man. They got guns and everything. I'm, I'm willing to take that risk, but we've got to get them arrested without death. I don't want to kill any more people. Oh, uh, people aren't fighters, man. I mean, uh, he's, uh, okay. Uh, he's kind of panicking a little bit. Like he's not really sure. He's like, uh, "This is not the route I wanted to go, but this is the uh, route." Most of my people just want to. Uh, they're just gonna like. If you're gonna do something, man. Just let me know, and I'll tell them all to run. But they ain't fighters. Uh, I want out of this too, but like I know what you're saying. I, I, I uh, he's like, I don't. He's like kind of realizing too that he's been like living with like a year. They're gonna get rid of him or something. Um. So he's like, look, he's like, there's always two up front, no matter what. There's one, there's one guard in the door, and there's one that kind of sleep. They're when they're off, they kind of go in shifts. Uh. I know, I know they're out of amphetamine. Their arms are out of the amphetamines. Run. So they don't have any combat drugs, but. They they still got ammo. They really haven't had to fire too many shots down here. Where do they keep their ammo? Is it with them at all times, or do they have? I mean, it? yeah, it's all suited up with them. The only one that has it off of him is the one that's sleeping. But uh, he, he, they usually he locks himself in one of the in one of the uh, security lockers to sleep. And and then uh, Sakia sleeps in their office. They lock that up too. Okay, let me. Uh, uh, he's like, but look, man, I, I, but there's like we got tools and stuff here, man. If you want to get into one of those rooms, you think it's gonna be hard to do it quietly, but. If, What do you mean exactly? You could break the lock off on the door or something like that, you know, or jack the hydraulics. Have a, have a quick failure. Maybe you can even lock the guy in his room. Yeah, but we only got four more to deal with. Well, look, yep. uh, like I, I can, I can hand you some tools, and if you give me, if you give me a heads up, I get my people out of here. We'll start running. But okay, I don't want to be here when the fuck when you guys start. You guys start firing weapons or trying to hurt people, whatever it is. Start getting your people um, ready to go. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll start spreading the word. Maybe uh, 
maybe create a little bit of hysteria whenever I give you a signal. That'll keep them occupied and maybe we can subdue them. Yeah, I mean, this is all about to break. It, it, it big, I mean, I could have some kind of... But, okay, yeah, I can do that. All right, I'll be, uh, I'll give you, I'll let you know. Just, okay. Well, let me go talk to my guys real quick. All right. But you, I'll relay. Waxer, I'll, yeah, I'll relay Jesse. What's up? I'll relay that to Waxer and Jesse and McMichael. Okay. They're like, oh, but how do you want to do this, man? Which one do you want to hit? Wait, yeah, but we can't, uh, our negotiations are fallen, yeah? This is the only way we see, yeah? This is the only way, and I don't want to kill them, but I don't want them to... I don't want to kill them, man. We won't go, we're not going to go shooting them. We go, we go, we got wrenches, we got stuff like that. We go beat them. I, I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, we can't do that. Um, I can try to actually, you know, jack the system here and make make the alarms and everything go off and so everybody gets out make a big distraction I mean, like, yeah man you make it you make it a big steam room right yeah you make it you make a big mess here but stuff coming in the wall then people freak out and they run out yeah so Come we on. all get out but uh yeah we'd need like a, something big I, you, like you, I mean, you, you could, could flush everybody out. That'd be yeah. You could rig it out by having some steam, like some of these, like kind of vents, uh, push off, overheat this a little bit here, and like kind of push. It will damage the system a bit. Um, it'll add more time to the repairs, but it would get people like it would activate it the alarm. It would get them safe. They would want to run. They would, and then everyone kind of understand why they're running. Yeah, I get that. I'll I probably guess. risk the the plant. For that, a good team here. These you, these guys that'll be working on it, I think they'll they'll do a good job to fix whatever gets broken. And so, all right. So, they was like, all right. So, like the steam, this is the room fills up with steam. It's all hot, sweaty. In here. Yes. Okay. We yeah. got one sleeping at all times. We got one guarding. Got big one in the room. We got the two up front. Mm-hmm. We got no guns, man. They don't let us bring guns in here. But yeah. what we do? Oh, uh, we can get in. Do I know like this secret place or like? Okay, so you do know there rooms. is. A, well, you what you do know is there is like a service tunnel that heads out to the surface. Okay. That would be taking vac suits and walking the surface of the of the station to try to get it. That'd be very precarious. That would be a way to go, but that's going to take like uh, like uh, quite a bit of marching and, and pretty dangerous way to go. Um, Got yeah, Bjorn and Lizzie in the outside. If we start a distraction, that may give them the time to run up here with could, our weapons. I mean, you could let them know, like, to basically, or you could mm. let them know to distract the front two. Yeah. While, while you guys take care of the other three in here. If we let them take care of those two, we can. If there's it's, enough of a distraction, maybe I'll just knock the other ones out. It's mm. doubtful, based on your tactical knowledge, because you have the skill tactics, right? Like, it's doubtful they'd be able to take those guys out. They could just kind of keep them occupied. They, they would not be trying to, sh- they don't, I mean, you don't think they could kill them. Like they, these guys would kill them before, but they could keep certainly distracted. We definitely want to keep them distracted and we can lock this door after everybody gets out or have the door, you know, something to keep them from escaping or coming in, the guys with the guns coming in. And then we will only have, what, three, two, if we can get the, one, the guard that's asleep locked yeah. in his area. Hey, McMichaels, you think you could uh, figure out a way to keep him locked up? Oh, yeah, I can break a lock, no problem. You do that. Uh, Waxer? Maybe you yeah. take care of the guard in front of Sakia's room? Okay. And, uh, that will leave just one. That'd be Sakia. Maybe she surrender after she know we took care of everybody else. It's possible. She got no choice. Yeah. Can yeah. we take that chance? But uh, I don't think we have a choice. I mean, if I have to, I don't want to do it, but if I have to shoot her, we we have to do our job too. I really don't want to do it, but if it comes down to it, Waxer, maybe you can knock me one of those guards' weapons and. Yeah, it's, uh, we try it. Yeah. We try it. Hopefully, we don't kill nobody because it ain't going to look good. But uh, yeah, yeah, we do it. I'll try to, re- I'll, if I restrain this guard, I'll, I'll give you the weapon. We just take it and maybe we get her to surrender. Mm-hmm. I'll be right there. Why, give me a scene test real quick. Ooh. 
double sixes. Six on the drama dies. 12, 13, 15. Okay. You spawn these guys' weapons. These guys have high end gear. Uh, their weapons are all uh, uh, encoded to them. Basically, only they can fire them. Yeah. So you, even if you were to jack the rifle, you're not going to be firing it. Well, just cut his hand off. Doesn't work that way. <laughs> Biometrics does not work that way, people at home. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you, we uh, can lock her in that room. We can make sure she don't come out, and we can bring in more security to have. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So you, take- let's do that. Let's you take out what we said. We'll do it that way. But instead of letting her out of that room, we lock that room down, and that becomes her prison cell. So. Yeah, because she won't be able to drink, eat, nothing. She'll she'll be trapped. The, she'll be the room through. does have like a window she'd be able to shoot out of. It has a reinforced window, but she'd be able to shoot through it. That's that's um, one against many though, is it's yeah. more like able, yeah, she'd be able to hold the position, but she's, she'd be eventually probably she'd be or you just gas her out or something. Mm. Yeah. All right. Jesse, you're kinda of looking at how to rig this thing to kinda of blow it. If Michael's has some ideas, he's he must be the kind of guy like to break things. <laughs> um <laughs> And uh, seems to know a lot about smoke. Uh, and so, and, Why? Uh, hmm. Yeah, he's, he's a very suspicious fellow. Uh, and uh, kind of like talking to you about it. And you, yeah, you have a way to steam the mach- steam this up to make it look like something bad's happening. Um, mm-hmm. The problem is that you're going to have to hit it from several positions simultaneously, uh, and possibly use your drone to do. Uh, you're going to have to make some stealth checks to see if you can kind of like. Get it so you sell it. So go ahead and roll uh, 3d6, the, the dice you have, plus uh-huh. your dexterity. And I don't know if you, have, I don't think you have stealth, but um, dexterity. Yeah, no. so it'd be, it'd just be dexterity to try to like uh, sneakily do this. I roll for Michael. Oh shit! Okay, that's a uh, 16 4 on the drama die. So you kind of manage to position your drone in a place to activate this, which is Michael oh. is kind of like plus two the dexterity. Okay. So McMichael kind of sets himself up uh, to go get the room locked up. You have your drone position. You have it all kind of set up. Uh, all you're doing is waiting for a signal from Wyatt. Wyatt and Waxer, uh, the two of you uh, are kind of hanging around, not too far from the guard, but you kind of have them in line of sight, uh, ready to rush them whenever like the stuff goes. So what's your signal, Wyatt? How do you want to let Jesse know to like start the steam up? Just pull arms up and go like this. No. Woody-hoo. No. Woody-hoo. Woody-hoo. <laughs> I'll just kind of, uh, I'll, I'll tap on something three times. Okay. Yeah, you have like some, there's like a pipe that goes the whole length. You can start tapping on it a little bit and kind of make some noise. Okay, so you make the noise and um, you hear McMichael, or McMichael, you're kind of watching, Mc, waiting for McMichael to make the first signal. He's going to be the one trying to lock the door. He goes and tries to like break the hydraulics on it. But, uh, and he kind of like, he actually rolled really well that. He goes, uh, like you kind of hear him like, and you can see like, the hydraulic, um, like he's kind of like messed with the hydraulic system, so it's over pressurized. It won't open. And he kind of like nods to you, uh, Wyatt. You go and tap on the thing. Jesse, you get the signal. Do you want to tell the drone to start up? Yeah, I'll just go. Baby, do your thing. Okay. So all of a sudden, like the the whole thing starts going. You kind of hear the pipe shaking a little bit, and then all of a sudden, like steam these steam release fits start going, as like there's like over high heavy pressure being applied to the thing, and it's being pushed out through the thing. See some like some um, lights that have they're kind of like uh, frosted over a little bit, with a little bit of water on them, kind of start swinging. And everyone, like, holy shit, what the hell is going on? And you hear, uh, you see uh, Fezzy go, everyone, out, oh, we got get out, shoot, like the thing is like blowing, and like, oh my god, and people are, like freaking out, and they start rushing out of it. Um, I, uh, what do you want to do, Wax? Or you're the one, you're you're like the, the big one. The, the guards like looking at everyone, what the hell? Is it? And he's like looking at him going, he kind of looks back to his, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, uh-oh, what happened here? Okay, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, rush uh, rush the guard. Okay, give me a grapple check. Okay. As you go, as you start trying to talk to the key, like, what the hell is going on? All right, so, uh, or, uh, or, like, just start, wait, oh, yeah, I guess it's grapple, okay. Yeah, I thought you wanted to subdue him. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. Shit, what happened to my sheet? Sorry, okay. Whoa, something happened to my computer. Okay, this, I think I have, like, a plus... Okay, 10, 3, 13, 19, and a 4 on the drama. Let me get my sheet back up. Okay. Uh, did, you get, and did you get doubles? Uh, No, I didn't. Okay. But um, I'll push up the lower one and I'll get a double. Okay, I had cool. a 3, I'll turn it to a 4, yeah. Okay, and you had 4 uh, stun points? Yeah. 
Do you go up and you actually uh, make another grapple check real quick? Okay. Hey, so you go up and you try, you're trying to like put him into like a body, uh, to like uh, make him into a human shield. Oh, okay. That is, uh, let's see, four, six, 13 and a one. Yeah, you actually beat him on that. So you actually managed nice. to put him into like, into kind of a human shield hostage situation. Um, and uh, he, uh, yeah, so basically he's in front of you and you're looking at her and you kind of have his gun off to the side and holding them. But you're like, you are you have him in front of you and you're looking at Sakia and she brings her rifle up to you and he's kind of looking at you like trying to get a beat on you as you're trying to pull back on the door. Uh, Wyatt, what do you... Uh... I want to stand back where um, Sakia can hear me, but not... Oh, oh sure, 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 not a problem. Yeah. I mean, I'll be like, time's up. It's time we move on from this. Put your gun down. Nobody has to die over this. And uh, you guys hear the people running out, still people kind of moving through it, and you start hearing gunfire coming from the front. Um, where you can hear your your two other OPA people are going out. He's like, it's like it's intense, yo. It's intense. <laughs> it's drama. Ah. All right. You can walk. You don't have to go to jail. You don't have to go to the brig or wherever they want to send you. You walk, but you walk away from here. Uh, okay. He pulls the trigger and a gun. Okay. Uh, Waxer, she hits you. Ooh. If I was right past and the shot goes like really close to you, uh, you take um, But I'll write it down. Okay. Oh, 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 sweet baby. <laughs> Three. Uh, you take twenty-three points of damage. Oh shit. Okay. So armor. I was wearing light armor, right? Yeah, which is a plus. Uh, I believe a plus one? Plus two. Plus two. Okay. Plus two. plus two. So I take two off. And then I had defense was like three, right? So yeah. Whatever your constitution, your toughness. Yeah. Okay. Like three. So that's eighteen, and then minus the rest off fortune. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got. So he takes okay. a shot at you, and like you kind of, it barely buzzes past your ear, and I mean you're right now you're like holy shit she's a crack shot like she can hit stuff so, and she takes cover behind the desk is like hold and is like in position to like hold that position for a while, um it, with her armor and everything like that too. Uh, let's go to Jesse. Jesse, you hear gunfire coming from both directions from you. Oh shit! Um, you can hear a lot of automated fire coming from the exit, and you can mm -hmm. hear a fire like uh, some shots being fired from back where that office was. Uh, you don't. You're out of line of sight of anyone, kind of by yourself. Everyone's kind of evacuated. Uh, your drone's doing its business. What do you want to do, Jesse? Okay, so um, can I just uh, stop all the, the the steam thing and uh, try to find, I guess, uh, Wyatt and wherever uh, Sakia. Okay, you're gonna head that way. Yeah. Once I see him coming up, can I ask him to fly his drone in there just long enough to give me a distraction to slam that door shut and lock her in? That again? Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to have, have his drone try to distract you? Okay, so yeah, he starts coming yeah. up and you're like, hey, send the drone in or whatever it is, is that what you're saying to him? Yeah, because I want to blockade that door somehow. Yeah, you can, you can try to like do that uh, the next round if you want to, to try to get the drone to give an instruction to pilot it in there, sure. Yeah. Um, let's go, I mean, Michael comes back and he's like, I got the guy locked in the room, man. He's probably gonna wake up soon, uh, and uh, and he's got like a pipe wrench with him and everything. Um, and then uh, Waxer, oh, it's the guy, the guy you're grappling, Waxer. He's gonna try to like, oh, yeah. this. he's gonna try to break free. So make another grapple check as he tries to break free. Okay, Ooh, okay. that is ten and a sixteen and a two on the drama. But he did not do as well. He did not out grapple you. Um, but he, um, uh, yeah, he's like struggling trying to break free of it all. Uh, but he actually like dr uh, drops his rifle. Oh, um, nice. Okay. okay. Uh, goes to her turn. She's kind of sitting there watching. Uh, did you want to try to wax her? What do you want to do? You want to try to like get out, like go pull back out of the room, or what do you? Want to do? Um. So he couldn't get out of the grapple, right? No, so, still, you're still holding him in front of you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to pull him out of the room then, yeah. Okay, uh, give me another grapple chest, see if you can move him out of the room. 
Okay, nice. Uh, okay, it's 13 here, 5 on the drama, and plus my con, which oh, is... Your strength, it's your, it's your, it's your right, um, oh. fighting. Oh, fighting. Oh, 6? Okay, yeah, so 19. And I got two fives. Okay. Yeah, you managed to pull him out of the, you managed to pull him out of the room, no problem. Uh, you're still holding him in the human, in the human shield kind of uh, thing. Um, and uh, do you want to do something different with them? Like... Um, you want to yeah, like try to like uh, put them into a chokehold, like you can like you can actually like try like like not just like have them in front of you, but also like pull them up so you're like trying to like yeah yeah okay. I'm just gonna try to put them out right. so that way. All right, so you you go ahead and you um do you want to put them on the ground or do you want to keep them on his feet? Uh, let's put them on the ground. Right. You pin so him. You, you manage yeah. to pin him to the ground. You 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 know you put the knee in his back and everything like that. He's, he's not getting up, but he has dropped his gun. Okay. Um, you kind of sit there with her position so that to uh. Why you're kind of instructing uh, Jesse to like help out with his little drone here? Um, I'm gonna need attic. <laughs> oh no! Oh, yeah. Dude, come on, man! Like, it has me dramatic. I can't do it without a comma. Why is that fun? <laughs> that work. There it is. That's what I wanted. Hey, um, blah blah blah. Okay. Not a problem. So, um, while you guys are kind of, uh, you guys are kind of sitting there outside, uh, quiet, you see something like, uh, clink off the back wall and come around the corner where you guys are, and it looks like a grenade and explode. Oh, shit. Uh. So, this will be penetrating damage. It'll be, uh, penetrating non lethal damage, though. It is a stun grenade. Uh, so I need. Okay. Uh, you each take uh, 13 damage. Okay. Uh, so take that off your fortune. Or you, you get to use your um, your constitution applies to it, so you can apply that to it, but no armor. Okay. Right. No armor. That's just your constitution for you, Jesse. So uh, just whatever that. They'll have a number called fortune on there. Uh, so I just. That's that's the my hit points. Basically, HP. yeah, we have a toughest of two, so you would take eleven damage. Thirteen oh. minus two, yeah. Okay. Oh so, yeah, so you. My toughness is actually up one, so I actually. All right. All of a sudden, this thing flashes, and you guys all next turn can't take a major action. You can only take uh, minor actions. Oh, shit. Uh, as the thing as the thing kind of flashes in front of you, uh, she threw a flashbang in there, uh, and her guy is also affected by it too. He's not feeling great. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Wyatt, I, uh, I don't feel good. Yes. Yep, it hurts. Uh, it hurts. Goes, to, goes to, yeah, goes to uh, Wyatt, your turn, man. You're sitting there and you're kind of like dazed out a little bit. Uh, you can't see much. Can I try? Is it with the flashbang? Is that completely negate me trying to lock the door? Get the door? Uh, you, can, you can move to the door, but trying to like actually close is going to be more complicated. I'm gonna try. I mean, I'll do whatever I can. I okay. don't want her to be able to shoot us anymore. All right. So you move up to the you move up to the door and you're trying to grab for the door, but you can't you can't grab it. Like you don't have enough. Like you're trying to reach out, but you can't really make it clearly out where it is. So you're but you're you're in position to feel around for it. But you do have now like major cover from her. But you're. I'm gonna uh, be like it's it's not worth it. You need to just put put everything down. You can walk away. All right. Uh, goes to Jesse. Jesse, you're like you're trying to like be able to see your control pad to like pilot your drone. Yeah. Um, and you're kind of trying to focus on it. You can start make a piloting check. So this would be um, Ooh, next, next one security one. piloting. So you have a plus four to this. Uh, that's not so not, not good. Uh, 10 plus four. So 14 plus uh, two of the um, drone okay. die. Yeah, so you go ahead and you start bringing you start bringing the drone up, and it's kind of like you're trying to get, you're trying to like match like what you're looking at on the ground with like what the drone is you're trying not to make him out but you're getting the drone kind of in position uh waxer you got the guy pinned uh he's kind of uh, moaning there a little bit uh what do you want to do right, he, uh, actually, actually, it's his turn. actually he goes before you okay yes he gets that uh yeah he does not get out he's he's like not trying okay. to like it looks like he's trying to get out uh, get out of it not going to okay. limp but he's trying to like try to be more comfortable it almost feels uh, Waxer, what do you want to do now? 
Is well, there we'll anything there. I could do to just sort of like tie up, tie them up, or secure them, or I have to like actually a, stay? That'd be on top. more of a major action, yeah. You can start okay. getting your stuff. Yeah, out. Like, I'll, you I'll, can start trying to like get something. You like, you start grabbing like your belt or something or like a strap or whatever. Yeah, you're yeah. Grabbing. I want to grab some kind of strap. Okay. Right. Uh, goes to uh, her turn. Uh, Wyatt, she takes a shot at you. You have major cover though. Very much. Uh, well, in a better position than not be in cover. Okay. Fair. So, okay. Actually. Scores. No, no stunts, though. Uh, Wyatt, she deals to you a whopping... She deals a whopping 16 damage to you, but you get an extra four armor bonus on this cover. Okay, so... Six. And what, uh, how much was that again? Uh, that was a total of 13, is that 16, what you said? 16, 16. Sorry. Yeah, so you, but, but the armor and the wall holes are keeping you, uh, keeping you covered, so. Oh, it, it still hurt quite but, a bit. Well, you're still in fortune, right? You're not, you're not, you're not taking damage. No, I still got a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, okay. <laughs> yeah, all right, me too. Uh, all right, so, um, Goes to back around to Jesse. Je uh, Jesse, you're sitting there and you're kind of able to see a little bit better the the drone. Uh, make another piloting check to see if you can get it in there and try to have it just like like what do you want the drone to do when it goes in the room with her? Yeah, so it's just smack her in the face as hard as you can or what? Yeah, like yeah, like do that thing that okay. just right. give me a give me a, give me a dexterity piloting test again here. So you have extra you have plus four in this total to do it. Okay. Uh and I'll just say, uh, Wyatt, I'm not built for this. And I, uh, you're doing good, you're doing good. And, uh, so plus four, so 13, so six on the drama die. Oh, so you got, you got 13 total, you said? Yeah, 13, and, and yeah, and six on the drama die. Okay, yeah, you actually, the drone comes swooping in and goes and smacks her in, like, her head. Uh, it doesn't do any. It doesn't do any damage. It's not a very heavy drone, but it's mm -hmm. enough to kind of like distract her. Like, it kind of throws her off, like her aims off her off her turn or something like that. So okay, okay, okay. Um, she also probably needs to hit this round. Um, goes to Wyatt. How far is she from me? If I went in the room, I mean, you could rush her. I want to rush her and try to grapple her to the ground. Okay, go in and make a grapple check. Yes. For some reason, I have grapple. And I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. Did you get uh, do you get any doubles? Uh, double fives. Double five. Okay, cool. Um, you uh, yeah, you can go ahead. You go up to her and uh, you grab her. Do you want to like try to like pin her? Do you want to try to like uh? Uh, start strangling her. What do you want to do? I take her down. I want to take her down and should like and hold her down until I can get more people in there with me. Okay. Uh, so make another make another grapple check. Fourteen, eighteen with a six on or double fours and a four on the drama die. Sorry. One total. Let me do that again. Hold on. Six, <laughs> 10, 14, 18. 18, okay. Yeah, you managed to you managed to grapple grapple her and you um uh you kinda like spear her to the ground. She goes down, uh she takes a little bit of damage from that actually. Uh not too much. Her armor seems to hold it up pretty well. Um and then you have enough if you wanted to like uh try to like um uh you I mean you do have enough stunt points if you want to try to strangle her. Or do you want to regain some? Um, you can also regain some uh, of your fortune back. If I strangle her, what does that do exactly? Strangling is basically uh, you roll grappling against her stamina, and if you win, she has to spend her minor action every round trying to like not pass out. <laughs> I'm going to strangle her. Pretty brutal. Like. Yeah. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you had her chance. Okay. All right. Peace out, flaxer. Okay. So, uh, make your make another <laughs> grappling check against her as you try to like uh, you're both grabbing her. 16. Six on the drama die. This he beat you on that one. Can I add uh, stunt points to it? Uh, 
I don't have many, I mean, but you mean, you mean fortune points? You fortune or fortune? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. So she rolled. I'm like, she rolled a nine, nine plus, rolled an eighteen total. Nine. What's your What's your like lowest die? A one. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have. To, and what'd you get total? A sixteen. Uh, fifteen. That's uh. That would be five fortune to burn, as long as it's not your uh, not your drama die. Yeah. No, it's not my drama die. My drama die is five fortune. Yeah, to burn. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. Nice. So yeah, you managed nice. it, and uh, you actually managed to start uh, uh, strangling her. You start, you kind of get on her, and, and you start like, uh, so you try to choke her out and everything. I'll look back at Jesse as I'm doing this to be like a little help. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, wax with the guy you're on top of. Yep. Uh, yeah, he stabs you. Okay. <laughs> okay. And he pulled a knife out of his pocket or uh, off his belt and stabbed you. Uh, he okay. Got a good hit here on you. So he got you for a whopping. Uh, how much? Get minus four on this, whatever this is. Okay, so you got like a four, you like four total defense on this. Yeah. Toughness. Yeah. Yeah. This. yeah so you got you for uh, fifteen damage with a knife. So you take eleven total. Oh. Do you feel okay, like, I'm out. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, you can burn. A, you can take a wound. How many? How many do you have left? You have how many points left? Or how many points over was that? Uh, seven. Seven. So it would be four over. Four over. Okay, so you had to roll. Roll to take a, uh, an injury. Roll one d six. All right. Those two backs don't feel bad. Six. I got okay, a right. six. Yeah, he stabs. You feel the knife go in, uh, and it cuts oh. into your side, but you still keep conscious, keeping him pinned to the ground. Um, <laughs> Blackstar, you have a minus one now to everything. Okay. <laughs> Dude, you guys Brutal. brought like fucking nothing to a gunfight. Like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. to a gunfight. You're not doing too bad. No, you're not doing too bad. Well, now, now I'm going to have to use my fists on this guy. So I'm going to use my fists. Okay, Blackstar, you're going to brawl him? Okay. All right, you give him some yeah. haymakers. Okay, so it's a minus one, right? So you have a minus one to everything right now, yeah. Okay, don't, get, don't, get the, don't get the, uh, the, the injury, and you'll be okay. All right, so I got 17 and a six on the drama. Yeah, you punch him. Uh, do you want to hit him harder? Or do you want to keep on? Or do you want to hit him? Uh, do you want to hit him again? Uh, do you want to give him the big haymaker? Yeah, let's just give him the big haymaker. So yeah. uh, extra two d six damage. So extra two d six. Yeah, okay. so I think you do a d six plus your strength, which I think yeah. your, your strength's high. What is like four? Three. Uh, you have a strength of three. Uh, yeah, three. Oh okay. wait, no, strength is two, but it says uh, I think because I have striking as a as a hey, uh, striking let me, let me master. Pull your sheet real quick here. Yeah, striking your style. Because I feel like that's off. I feel like you're okay. Yeah, tougher than that. Just make sure. Uh, fighting. Strength. Oh, okay, you got a strength. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you um, yeah. So it's gonna be uh one d six plus three. Uh, but if you do the okay. big if you do the big haymaker, it'll be uh three d six yeah. plus three. So give him that. Okay. All right, let's do that. Okay, uh, that's eight, ten plus three, but then I get a minus one, right? So it's no, really it twelve. Count. It's only it's only on skill oh, checks. Okay. okay. How much was the total? Okay, cool. Thir Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, you 13. go. You bring yeah. it. You 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 bring it. Uh, like he kind of reach. He kind of reach back to stab you. You go up and you kind of try to punch. Kind of give him the rabbit punch. Um, and it hurts him. It hurts him a bit, but he's still conscious. Um, and the... okay. Damn it. <laughs> goes to um who am I on next here? Uh um next. Oh, it was, it was her, right? Uh yeah, she yeah. was that well, she's yeah. good. Okay, she's gonna try to uh break the grapple. Uh so she rolls her grapple check. Yeah, roll your grapple check uh why it's Triple sixes plus four. So Pretty twenty. Good. Yeah, you keep her. You keep her held down on the ground, strangling her. Did you just like you're just trying to choke her out, dude. <laughs> Give up. Yeah, you go tap out, tap out, go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to kill you. Yeah, uh, oh, Jesse, uh, you're standing there, your drone slap in the face, and then Wyatt like rushed her. <laughs> she's on the ground. You can see, you can see where Waxer has been stabbed. Uh, McMichael, it like comes in, it's coming with his pipe wrench to go help Waxer. He's like, go help it, go help the, go help the XO. I'm gonna help Wyatt. All right. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go. I don't know what. What do you want me to do? I don't okay. know. What, what... Yeah. Uh, Wax or uh, McMichael comes up with a pipe wrench. <laughs> yeah. And come on. 
Uh, yeah, he caved the dude's like, he, the, the guy's lucky he's wearing a helmet, I'll say that. Yep. You can see blood <laughs> coming out underneath the helmet, like, he fucking cracked the dude pretty hard. Oh, it's pretty nice. little. Yeah. But then again, he did stab you, so, you know, you know yeah, fair, fair yeah, play. Yeah, did. You know. Um, all right. I'm gonna tag McMichael's in! Just <laughs> <laughs> that kind of match, right? Okay. Uh, Jesse, yeah. so, Jesse, so you're sitting there watching uh, Wyatt, like, uh, on top of on top of uh, Akia, like trying to strangle her as she's like trying to get out of the grab. Uh, you're pretty sure she's gonna pull a knife, or, or like you can see she has a knife on her belt. She has a sidearm. Like, uh, okay. So what do you want to do? Yeah. So I want to try to find anything like a heavy object that I can try to just knock her. There's like I mean, there's, a, there's a chair in the room. We can go full rustling with this. You can throw a chair. You can try. Oh, to... let's draw <laughs> chin up. Beep, beep. And yeah. Right. So I'll just. I'll just grab a, a the share or anything okay. I can and try to knock her out. All right, and, give me a, a so this will be a fighting test. Um, so this is gonna be I probably put this is a heavy brawling? weapon. We'll say this is brawling like with your fists. Uh, so, oh, okay. So you get an extra. You get so roll your dice and add one to it. Okay. Come on, Jesse. Oh, that's that's really good. That's really good. So that's uh. 14. Uh, 15 plus 4 on the uh, drama die. Right. Yeah, you hit her. Uh, did you gain doubles? Uh, no. Okay. So yeah, you go up and hit her. So roll, um, this will be, uh, 2d6, uh, and for you, plus 2. 2d6 plus 2 damage. 2d6 plus 2 damage. Okay, so that's... 6. 6, okay. Yeah, you hit her pretty hard. Um, you kind of smash her in the face with the chair. Uh, she's still uh, conscious without much issue. Um, I just hit Wyatt because I'm the bad guy. No. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Wyatt. Wyatt, uh, you see, you, know, you see Jesse's like hitting her, trying to hit her with the chair, trying to knock her out. Uh, do you want to keep on strangling her? Do you want to try to like uh, punch her? What do you want to do? Does she look like she? If I, hmm. What does she look like right now? She's about to pass out. She, she 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 looks like a woman in heavy armor being choked and smashed in the face by a chair. <laughs> it's incredible. Like yeah, no, I just hold in. I really don't oh, like doing oh. this, but I'm gonna keep choking. Okay, it's like two the... tag team matches. Yeah, right. no, yeah, yeah. You main, you maintain the uh, the choke on her. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to roll. You want to maintain it. Okay. Um. All right. So, uh goes to uh the guy the guy yeah the guy uh he does not like, like that uh he's actually unconscious he went limp um waxer what do you want to do do you want to go and try to help out try to get in the room yeah yeah right. you know bleeding i'm, I'm gonna try to yeah, get you, into you, that you, room you kind of hobble into the next room and you kind of see them like on it you, you can't get in to help them right now but you can certainly be help ready to help okay. next turn okay um and then uh i think it was her turn was last yeah. yes yeah, oh. yeah yeah so she she kind of like uh uh she goes to like um i don't know what she's gonna do oh she pulls her gun <laughs> she pulls her pistol oh okay, she, she can't well okay all she can do is pull her pistol she that's all she does she's like being choked but she uses her major action to pull her pistol she doesn't fire though um right all that's right good. that's really yeah, good yeah that's really good yeah but she does have the pistol ready to go um I think we're back around oh. to Jesse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to like? What do you want to do, Jesse? She's pulled a pistol. Hit her again. Yep, I'll hit her again. All right. Uh, roll <laughs> attack. Roll at the chair. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's a twelve, fifteen. Not a problem to hit. Any doubles? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What'd you get? Double. Two. Hey, what'd you get? The drama die. Uh, two. Okay. Uh, do you want to do? I'll let you do like a, a heavy hit on her. So like, uh, roll two d six plus and add two to it. Uh, oh, sorry, three d six. Sorry, three d six. Three d six. Yeah, you can extra die. Sorry. You're, you're oh. Different. Okay, so that's uh twelve. Oh, okay, you smash her with the chair again, trying to like uh knock her out, and she's still holding on. Uh, she is tough. Whew. Uh, let's mm -hmm. go to. You, McMichaels comes in with the pipe wrench, and or he kind of pokes, he pokes the guy with the pipe wrench. He's like, yeah, he's out, boss. <laughs> uh, Waxor, it's your turn. You can get in there and hobble in and try to like subdue if you want to. Yeah, yeah, I'll get in there and I'll. Uh, do you want to try to rustle, like, rustle the gun from her? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. I'm gonna try to get grapple, the gun. Give me a grapple check here. Okay. 
So that's uh, uh, fighting, right? Gra grapple, grappling, yeah, fighting. Yeah. Have it, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Oh man, all right. So I got five. Where's the fortune? Seven. Uh, oh, yeah, fortune. Seven, seven, four. No, I don't know. Four, plus four, eleven. Eleven. Yeah, you go and try to wrestle it. You can't. Like your your hands are too slippery with whatever mm -hmm. blood was in the other room. Ah, um, like... We'll go to Wyatt. Yeah. Four of us on this. <laughs> this is crazy. She's badass, <laughs> dude. Totally yeah, yeah, she, she is. She's a professional. Wyatt? Yeah. I'm just going to continue to. <laughs> nope. I'm going to punch her. Okay. I'll try to knock her go out. For it. Give, me, give me the attack roll here. We're like, you're hired. This is your test. <laughs> that, I had fighting, right? Yeah. 17. You hit. You need doubles? Nice. Now doubles. Right. And that's 2d6. Or what is it for? Striking. If it's striking style, it's 1d6. If you don't have striking style, it's 1d3. And then, I don't think you have striking style. Nope. So 1d3 plus your strength. 1 plus my strength is 1. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you like punch her and she's kinda, she kind of laughs. <laughs> All right. Michael's pulled to the face. Um, <laughs> she sees that all four of you are now coming in there on her, and she kind of like <laughs> she kind of goes limp on it all, and understands that the, the battle's over. Thank God. Why did it take? Yeah. Why did you give up at the beginning? She's you are like, a tough she's coil, like, lady. Yeah, she's all, she's like, she kind of spit some blood out, kind of coughing a little bit, and she's like dropped her gun and everything. <laughs> like, would you have given up if you were me in, your, in my position? No, I respect it. But I don't like okay. it. All right, she kind of whistles. She kind of goes in and like tells her guys to like stand down and everything. They'll kind of stand down. Your one, your one guy stabbed me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, uh, like, we could do this a couple different ways too. I mean, you still want the job or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a. I mean, let's let's just get. I'm done with this. Let's go. Let's take them out. She kind of like feel her throat and everything, and she's like, yeah. For, bet, for the best. Good plan, guys. Yeah. Great plan, everybody. Yeah. Hey, a plus. Didn't do too bad not having a single weapon. No. <laughs> no. No. Not too bad. Not too bad. You just had a lot of guys. Yeah. So they're all kind of like, they're all, they, the, all this, this whole crew of like, uh, Oak, Oak Fly is kind of freaked out about it. And um, they, uh, they're not really sure, like, uh, you can tell some of them are kind of resentful, but they seem to respect uh, Sakia enough to, like, accept the fate. Uh, they don't give their weapons, uh, like, but you kind of carry her stuff out of there and they kind of come out. And as you get out, you can see the ice field people are out there kind of watching what they want to see what happens. And um, after the shots are fired, you can tell, like, some MCR people and some UN people kind of show up and security force all kind of like, what? These guys, some of these guys are kind of getting like, they're not too sure. Uh, the Martians and the UN people are asking, like, are at, come up to them, Wyatt, and they're like, take these guys in or what? They let them go. Um, go, Exo. Yeah, well, Waxer's is bleeding. He's just like, oh. <laughs> I'm going to look at Waxer and I, get, kind of shrug and be like, your call, buddy. I mean, they they were just holding on to what they had. You know, they came here and uh, secured the station. I, I think we, maybe we do this as a gesture for and in front of all uh, frost the frost folks. But uh, I don't know. I think uh, she was tough, and maybe uh, maybe we just let it go this time, and then that uh, so nobody nobody goes and gets harmed, except like, for me. <laughs> yeah, Michael kind of looks at Jess. He looks at Jess. He goes, "Man, what about this guy, man? It's his. his it's his. It's kind of his gig, man. We should do it as." Uh, what do you say, Jesse? I'm not professional in fighting <laughs> or overtaking governments. Yeah, but man, you 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 went you you the head honcho of this thing, man. They say you the one that you. I saw how you analyzed. How did I on. do that? I didn't do anything. I just hit people with chairs here. Yeah, but you stood up for it, man. You defended your own. That's a thing, man. That, that puts you up there, man. You got respect now. You got some street cred. People are going to hear about that. I don't know about that. I just hit people with chairs, and they were already holding me. Uh, anyway, do, do do what Waxer says. I, 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 this is not, and I just walk away. Oh, before I do that, can I try to heal uh, Waxer? You can patch him up, yeah. 
Okay. You use the mech skill and you, you patch up his wound so he's no longer bleeding out. Oh, yeah. All right, stand oh, still, Wexer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Give him a quick patch up work. It's, it's not very, it's not a very great job, but it'll give him back to the where he needs to attention. Okay. Um, I'm yeah, gonna go over to Sakia and be like, "We let you go. You just go." Well, I still got some credits out there and spend them for a while. Probably, uh, we get off world. We get in our, I get in our job someplace. No hard feelings. Ah, no. professional. Well, professionals, man. Remember, you took a lot of took a, you thought you you OP Navy folks ain't bad, man. You come in, you try you try to get career with the sloop. We'll uh we'll probably be in contact someday. It's we can do like, somebody like you. And she kind of says to you, kind of just kind of leans in and says, "Man, at least you come you don't come in in power armor and try to say we're gonna kill everyone no matter what." <laughs> it's true. She's like, you know, you gave us at least a fair fight. Yeah, right. <laughs> we didn't even like use you. a single weapon. <laughs> well, except for. Yeah, McMichael's kind of. They always give the high to that guy. He fucked that dude up pretty bad, actually. Like he clapped the dude back the head. Like, uh, he gave him yeah. the cheap shot. Oh man, <laughs> like, that's McMichael's. That's McMichael's, he man. Comes, yeah, yeah. Like, he, he may be kind of a jerk, but he comes through and he, he's clutch. He's clutch. He, he is a clutch hitter. I'll look at the yeah. historian guys in the UNN and be like, uh, "Problem solved. Just let him go." Yeah, man. All right. All right. I said we good, yeah. They're yeah, we're got the station, man. We take it. They do kind of like, uh, and they kind of like confiscate their magazines and shits, or yes, yeah, so they don't they're probably ammo yeah. and everything. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. mm-hmm. Oh, oh wait, uh, there's a guy in the. Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy you're gonna have to freeze to death in the back. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. That guy, <laughs> oh, bang. All right, everybody, have a nice day. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you managed to resolve the situation. The station, you have the ice processing solved. station back in, back in the control of of it. Prax kind of hears about the solution. He's like, I've seen weirder. Um, and uh, you know they're they're kind of happy with it all. Uh, you know the 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 UN and the Martian guys are like not the cleanest job, but I guess it'll do. Uh, you got a little bit of respect for the for the OPA Navy here. Um, Prax seems happy with it being it. Uh, Jesse, you've got to definitely have your work cut out for you to bring this thing back to full capacity. But it'll take probably about a year to get it fully fully back. But you guys can start the maintenance and have a union that knows the system inside and out. LA have been living down there for a year. Awesome. Um, Anything else before you, we wrap up here? Yeah, nothing. Job Just well done. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we did well, and I, good job, Jesse. Take care of this place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're ever here in Ganymede, please maybe call me, and we'll try to, to not do it this whole thing again. But yeah, I'll be here. Listen, next time we come back, yeah. we'll bring the cap with us, and she's got some damn good chocolate. You like cookies? You'll like the oh, chocolate. Oh yes, I do. I would like that. <laughs> Don't forget to let that guy out of that room back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, everyone, so we're going to wrap up there. So the stations, we got the ice processing plant back uh, under control <sighs> for the station. Um, hey. We kind of had a solution where we got all the, the workers out. Um, they kind of had their position. You guys kind of worked with them and yeah. uh, try to listen to everybody and such. Um, or hey, man, you got fun. Hey. Okay. Oh, that was so good. Was so it? Intense, dude. Was it? Okay. It's too really much intensity, but it was really <laughs> fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting yeah, me. Yeah, man, dude. you bet. Well, thank yeah, you. you're but, awesome. Uh, let everybody know who you are, where they can find you, and hang out. Um, right after that, we're gonna go ahead and pull a winner. For those that haven't uh, entered yet, you can go ahead and enter the giveaway in the chat by typing the word ICE. Uh, that was kind of a giveaway of tonight's game. Um. Mm. Uh, Michael has it in his brain that every single one of my, <laughs> one of my uh, chat things to enter is some sort of clue for the game to unlock the whole game. That one um, was the most clue clue like one actually. So mm, yeah, yeah. Um, hey. Hey, so 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 it's me, Robo Goblin, and you can find me at TTRP Gifts on Twitter and on Twitch. And I stream sometimes, and I'm taking a break right now. But this was so fun. Thank you everybody for for inviting me. This, this group is so cool. It's so awesome. It's fun being in space. Yeah. Yeah, wrestling in space. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a little, that was a little, little tight knit combat there. And I got a link in the chat there, so you can go look up Jorge online. Everybody, I'm gonna go pull a winner right now. Hey, yeah. Good luck. Right here, we got a folks enter. Uh, let me go ahead and hit roll it. Its winner is. 
Oh, you're gonna be Shell Wrath forty two. Do you know? Hey. Uh, nice. Yeah, they were, yeah, very cool. Thank you, Shell Wrath, uh, for tuning in. We'll be sure to all contact you and get your information to the brushes and. Ah, nice. Have a lot of fun with it. Um, hey. Everyone, we're we're back next week with the full crew. Uh, thank you yeah. again to Jorge for stepping up at the last minute. Uh, we are yeah, thank you. Us. You can find us everywhere with this link here to our link tree. Uh, we're on everything. We have a podcast list, uh, past episode, like good stuff. You can also support us on Patreon. Uh, it's a great way to support us and uh, make sure you help us keep going. We uh, help pay our players, our guests, uh, help uh, get us better gear, uh, do all the cool yeah. stuff that we can do with the Expanse and everything, try to make the best Expanse uh, actual play we can find. Um, once again, and thank you to Jorge for last minute hanging out with uh, yeah. Jesse thank Rodriguez. You. Hey, Jesse thank Rodriguez. You, thank you. All right, everyone, uh, we are out, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.